The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. We got triple applause. My God. God. We'll see you all next week. You take care. Thank you. Good now. night. We love you. You've been so generous, chat. That was a good show. You're particularly hot today, chat. You do. I am physically hot today. There's oh, shut very up. humid it? today. 20 Celsius up there. You don't get uh, to make that argument air conditioner land. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we're American. We don't put extra letters in our fucking words, including U's and L's and all this other shit. And we have this thing called air conditioning when it gets hot. And teeth. You're Americans. You have plenty of L's. Hey! <laughs> Not as many as you. Hey, high five, Mona. Uh, high five. <laughs> <laughs> and that's coming from Brits. Yeah. You'd be goose stepping if it wasn't for us. Probably not, yeah, actually. Man, probably no, not. yeah, you would have. We were tough to get because we were a little island. Yeah, we were, we were on an island, so we were we tough. We would you to death. <laughs> I mean, like, look what came out of it. Beans on toast. That's like a delicacy for you. Okay. Fish and chips. Fish and chips as well. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Chips and fish. One of the, re one of the reasons why they... they uh, like an afterthought food for didn't us. Man here, didn't but. mandate, but Friday was fish and chip day during the war because it was a, 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 a good balance of I, protein, I'd rather have carbs, a carbs and fats. fish and chips day than Pride Month. That's just me. Well, you have to celebrate Pride Month for it to count for a start. Pride and chips. <laughs> Pride and fish and chips. Pride and fish and uh, chips. Or fish tacos. Fish tacos. That's what will happen if the Germans invaded Mexico. Uh, well, I mean... <laughs> that was... that was We were almost there. He almost went to Mexico. I was going to... Yeah, yep, yeah. On the doorstep, well. you know. Oh, happened. He's halfway. We were bombing the fuck out of Germany. Never mind, vice versa. We'd already won the Battle of Britain. 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 We'd already Britain. won the Battle of Britain. 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 <laughs> Britain. Yeah, we don't need tees anymore. So speak properly. We add U's and Britain. remove tees. The Battle of Britain was over. We'd Britain. won. Spit the time fire. of the orc had come. The hurricanes, the Vulcans, not, you know, live long and prosper Vulcans, had, uh, had dominated. And we had sent the Luftwaffe back to Germany. And then we, we got Bomber Harris to airline? literally flatten Germany with bombs. Oh, that's Lufthansa. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. I don't know if they would, have, have, they would have had to have done what we did on D Day. They would have. I don't know what you're Ace is high. I was listening to Ace is high at the gym this morning, chat. Mm -hmm. Fucking great, great oh. song. Oh. Mm. Good workout, too. Uh, hi, welcome to Real Real BBC. BBC. Hi, hi. Yes, I'll drop a video before the stream if I want to. When I'm waiting you for can't Gary. Stop him. Did you did you did you drop a video and drop a stream at the same time? Yes. Oh, that's really great. I did a Ryan. You, you pulled a Ryan. So pulled a Ryan. Which mm. one gets notified? <laughs> that's, that's uh. <laughs> take your pick. <laughs> take your pick. Let's see. Pick one. Anyone. Let's see if I got uh, I it's a flash it. bomb. Hmm? It's a flash bomb. That's yes, us. That's us. Uh, didn't get the other one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, 
Wait. Final, final fa- what FFXVI, whatever the fuck that is. Final Fantasy yeah. 16. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Roman numerals and all that. Come on yeah, now. You're shedding your gamer cred. Yeah. Final Fantasy. I know it's a game that has lots of sequels. Here's a, here's a picture of me watching The Flash. I... I... <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I know that Final Fantasy is nowhere near being final. <laughs> That's no. all I know. <laughs> I think the first Final Fantasy came out in 87, maybe 80, 87 or 89, around there. And it was because it was the company's last shot of the dice. If this game failed, that was it. So this was so they called it Final Fantasy as a sort of... And then it became the most Possibly ironic potential, title yeah, ever. Potential goodbye. <laughs> And uh, 87, I was right. 1887. Holy shit. Oh, Stop. wait. Did, when did we set the date for Gary being attacked by Gollum in the form of playing a video game? Well, it was last Wednesday, but Gary forgot that he was going away again. So we couldn't do last Wednesday. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be Monday. Be now. And then I traveled. Mm. So that didn't happen. Um, soon. I, I'm home. I'm home for till Comic Con. Mm. I'm home. Just over chat. He said soon. Soon. I have to. <laughs> make, I have a couple videos to make, which will take me two days. Then I'm open. I'm absolutely open to it. I got some secret evasion to watch. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Did you get the first two episodes? No, no. I'm going to watch it with everybody else. I, like, I get one thing early. I get one motherfucking thing. Do you know how many, th- you know how many things I've seen early? Two. Uh, a violent night with Chris Gore because I was his plus one. Uh, the boys, hey! premiere, the boys premiere way back in the day because I know the guy who co created it. And Picard season three, I was straight up illegally given. <laughs> I was not this list is just it. getting longer and longer. Yeah, I know. I, I said two, but it, then it's two became in nine four. years. I got three things. Okay. And I went to see The Flash at a fast fan screening that I actually gave him money for, which is sad, but uh, I did. Oh, I, I, I got enjoyed to, I got The Flash, though, didn't you, Gary? Come but on. I gave money so others don't I have to. The company I was with, uh, two, uh, <laughs> two people who, who uh, 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 Miguel and Enrique, who uh, yes. watched the show, uh, offered me a seat. That was better than my shit seat, and I hung out with them, and that was the best part of the movie. They were super cool. What about the part where he said, "You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts." <laughs> um, I thought he said, "You want to get nuts? Then suck these nuts." Do you want to get nuts? Better. I that like the way he said it with no feeling at all, whatsoever, because well, it was just a line. It's funny. Mueller provided a clip to me <laughs> in private chats that I we'd love. I'd love for you to share, Mueller. On well, Michael Keaton's comments on the canceled Batgirl. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't He's have any good. problem. You wouldn't have any problem for a copyright with this, I don't think. And it's it's just funny. I it is I'm, funny. I'm okay. I'm okay. Then I'll give you some context after that. Oh, it's right. okay. So you've you've done it. You put it in the private chit. Yeah. Yeah. For anybody who hasn't seen this, it's funny as fuck. It, it is funny. If you think Michael Keaton gives a fuck about anything. <laughs> oh no, not in the slightest. He's he's sort of like Bill Murray. He's a Is he less of, of an asshole though? But yeah. less of an asshole. A less of an asshole, but yeah. like really in the I don't give a fuck. So I had to I had to sort my audio out because I hadn't done it. Oops. Another iconic performance of yours. When will we next see you as Batman? And what was your reaction to Batgirl not getting released? Uh, it was kind of, I don't really, you know, I think it was a business decision. I'm going to assume it was a good one. I really don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume it was a good one. <laughs> oh. I just turned up for a day and got paid. It was more in a day, but um, not much more. Uh, <laughs> not much more. Well, um, I threw up some. This was from a Danish. No, it's not Danish. I'm getting it wrong. Netherlands is that Danish? That, I eat Danishes. 
Dutch. Uh, it's Dutch, whatever. Um, yes. But uh, uh, so one, some European. This is why America could never invade Europe. They have no fucking well, idea where anything is. Okay, you know, the road signs and be like, "What? We take it all. <laughs> we don't care about your borders over there. We just take it all whenever the fuck we want." Okay. Well, in all fairness, Gary, you do you do tend to worry about borders when it's not your own country. Um, the only border I'm concerned with is South uh, Texas. I can give a fuck South about Texas. all the other ones. The ones around my property. Those are the ones that I give a fuck about. <laughs> 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 Sorry, where was I? Uh, what? Uh, some blurgy blurgy smorgaborga magazine that I can't fucking Yeah, that's, that's Holland. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. language is he speaking? Dutch. Uh, Incredible. So the pictures in the video Flemish. were all from, from that uh, that were shared with me. So they're out there already, but uh, I got DMCA'd on one of them. The laptop picture of uh, of uh, Keaton's Batman on somebody's laptop in an editing bay. Oh, they, they ripped that one down. I'd love to show it here, but I want to get you in trouble. <laughs> so I'll show it on the nooner tomorrow. Just, <laughs> Gary, do your own like doodle version of it so that we can, okay. we can understand. Well, I could... Sh well, the, if I show it on my phone... Would that be bad? Oh, uh, no, we better not. Uh, a doodle version. Imagine a, an open laptop with Batman on it. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. It's not that exciting. I don't know why they took that one down. That was, that was a Batgirl like, editing thing, was it? It was, yeah. It was Batgirl being edited. And mm. it, it appeared, it's already out there. So um, I would just, I'm going to throw out a hypothetical for you all. Do it with the reception of the Flash. Mm. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Uh, oh, with the reception of the going, Flash, I hope it's going. <laughs> the the let's just say that how would you feel if you were the creators of Batgirl? Now, like Batgirl got canceled, and it was really fun to joke on and stuff like that. But let's think about like how bad the fucking DC EU has been. How the fuck you feel about that? Because it was testing. It tested higher than two of the movies that are being released. Much higher. By the way, now I am th testing, this is because this testing, is the first time uh, Flash tested really well too, right? Remember? Yes, Flash better than any really of the well. others. Better it, than it was, any of the others. It was called oh, like the game changing fucking movie at CinemaCon, which is just a fucking joke. Game changing, game changing fucking movie. People were calling it an absolute triumph, the greatest superhero film, including Save James lives. Gunn. What was that? Save it saved lives. Life. Yes. So James Gunn going out there and bullshitting us, I actually get. I know he's a fucking liar. Yeah, that one makes some liar. sense. Yeah, he's trying to like save, save money because yeah, he knows it's about to tank. Well, this is the first time I have actually really wanted to see Batgirl. Yes. Yeah. I think a lot of people having see seen this, I really want to see Batgirl. Now. Because my guess would be there was much more Michael Keaton Batman in it. Much more. Probably. Um, yeah. Hypothetically, not, not from what I I've heard. Didn't know that the Gotham looked more like Burton's Gotham because that's the aesthetic that they used. Uh, I'm not saying they it filmed it in good. Glasgow. Yeah, uh, Glasgow. Glasgow. <laughs> Glasgow. Glasgow. I like to go to Paris, France. Overpaid, <laughs> oversexed, and over here. Um, where was I? Uh, guilty. I don't know what you you're just in said. Glasgow. You just said over sex. I said, oh, never mind. Um, what was I saying? Uh, the Flash coming out, the reception. Let's just say people who worked on it might have been a little fucking pissed, a little pissed about everything that went on, that they were the tax write off when this whole fucking thing should have been the tax write off. Let's be real. They yeah, should have canned them all. They should have, should not have released any because these are going to absolutely hurt. The new DCEU, like the normies aren't going to notice the difference. All right, what about all those other movies that just came out? No, we're restarting our continuity. What the fuck is continuity? What are you <laughs> talking about? What's a crisis? What's a <laughs> what's a multiverse? I just want to see the fucking Flash. And you know, people have been pointing it out. The Quicksilver scenes are so much better than oh, any yeah. anything yes. they have done. At the beginning of the Flash, they try to. They tried to do a, a quick silver scene with the babies and the, you know. And it was terrible. Building. And it, well, yeah. It, it didn't, it, even the second quick silver scene 
which wasn't as good as the first one. You know, in the next movie, it wasn't as good as the first one. Mm-hmm. That is still infinitely better than than this. Yeah, for sure. It it is my hope that some of the people behind Batgirl go out and talk. That's what I I want all this stuff out there. I want this like stop playing nice with each other and playing political. I don't think that shit's going to even work anymore. And you're starting to see it. Like Chris Hemsworth came out and talked shit about his own fucking movie. I'm like, yes, good. Yeah, uh, more of this. He well, yes and no. Okay. He said it in yes. a really nice way. <laughs> But to even come out and say it against Disney, that was unthinkable three years ago. Did you see um, Extraction 2 yet? I have not seen it. Uh, you guys are all raving about it, so I'm going to go oh, see it. Oh, I think I watched them back to back. I gonna... never saw the first one, so I watched them back to back. What do you think of, which one do you think is better? Two. Ooh, okay. I think the second really one is one. better than oh, the first wow. one. Oh, yeah. wow. I think one was pretty good. I mean, yeah, I thought one was good. I second one, good. They, the characters they're introduced in the first one, they do more with in the second mm. one. And uh, some of the scenes, I heard that, <laughs> some of the scenes and the environments are just like bueno. The, the action, so I, I ended up liking the second superb. one. More. The action was absolutely superb. So I, I can't wait to see. It. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, action movies are going to be where it's at, kids. They're cheaper to make. Uh, they've always been a staple. You know, they've been a staple for a long I fucking mean. time in Hollywood, and they you can fall back on them, and they're profitable. That's that's the. That's I like most- how you're saying this as though superhero movies can't be action movies or something. But like, what I feel yeah. like it's yeah, what right. the reality I think we're scratching at is: when was the last superhero movie action scene you saw and went, "Whoa, that was awesome"? Uh, Batman in the warehouse in Batman versus Superman. Oh, actually, I'll I'll give it to you. That scene's pretty good. That's a good scene. <laughs> he that was definitely the last one kills that I, a I few went, of those guys. Yeah, I went. Yeah, no, he he kills many people there, <laughs> if not all oh, of them. Dude, Batman killed guys in Flash. He fired guns. Yeah, well, yeah, he just yeah, I mean, one, of the fly, one of the guys on the bike like flying off and he no, was he's dead. A car. He's the he's the bit mm. Batman, so he definitely no, no, kills no, the fuck out of they both, No, both Batman kill like in the in the Flash. They straight up smoke some. Yeah, guns. no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Keaton's Batman killed as well in in the eighty nine well, and ninety twos. I was gonna say rewatching Eddie died. Yeah. It was funny because Rags was asking like, uh, "This does this Batman killed?" I was just like, "I'm not gonna answer that question." And then he goes to the Axis Chemicals like factory and explodes the entire <laughs> thing when there's like loads of henchmen in there. And Rags was like, "I'm sure they're fine. <laughs> They'll be right." The, the, what about the guys who just mows down with the Gatling gun on the Batwing? <laughs> yeah, just mows them down. God, I gotta get that Batwing now. But it's such a good film though. Oh, yeah, and that yeah. was the thing that when you were a kid, you just like, I didn't know Batman killed. Because I'd only had the, uh, by then, I'd only had the 66 Batman show. I'd never, I, w- I didn't pick up, start picking up the comic till 92. So well, I was just like, thing, right? Batman kills? Is there a Batman movie where he doesn't kill someone? Even a guy dies uh, in Batman 66. Batman 66. Movie. Does a guy die in that? Yeah, because he stands on the trampoline, which sends it, or the oh, doing. Yeah. Which sends him into the water, which hits the mine, which blows him up. Oh no! <laughs> so there's actually a fatality in the night in the Batman oh, sixty six movie, up. or is he just like, you know, peripherally responsible for his death? I don't know. I mean, it's people completely died scary. in in Rachel Gould's headquarters you, in I Batman Begins. They died. You, uh, that's actually killing somebody. <laughs> Well, well, it's, I mean, it's, te- it's technically not. However, people definitely died due to his actions in Ra's al Ghul's headquarters. Well, yeah, and I mean, yeah. Well, the fact Including is, right, fake Ra's al Ghul. Batman doesn't murder. I'm pretty sure all of those films are clear on that. He doesn't murder. He does kill, but he doesn't okay. murder. But those things are different, okay? But you know what's being murdered? The superhero film. I, I was, oh, we should play taps at this point because like when we're listen when you are scraping the bottom of the barrel and you're not being innovative so you have the flash come out and it's gobbledygook poopy poop and uh, we're getting more gobbledygook poopy poop including the marvels and then the craven trailer which we got to watch gets released and it's like I, i'm a spider-man fan craven is one of my favorite spider-man <gasps> villains oh, what did you, think, what did you think of the trailer i laughed uh, so hard i thought it was just it's craven time that's what i felt like it's yes craven time. I, I had the exact same thought i was like oh no this is morbius but with less spice <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes 
It's just and lamer. I don't even want to see Morbius, and I haven't seen Morbius, and I, I don't ever Morbius. want to see Morbius. <laughs> Madam Web is coming out, and she's going to be basically like Spider Woman. <laughs> I mean, like they're not going to make. Is, do you have, do you feel kind of when you know this? You're like kind of kid in a candy store of just watching it all burn. <laughs> like, yes. Look, there's that one, and that one, and that one. They're all. This is a Sony, Craven Sony. It, it is. Well, it Sony, doesn't matter at this like, point, right? Sony. Uh, this is leftover stuff, and they're, they're like Carnage Two was terrible. Or not fuck Carnage Two. Uh, Venom, Venom Two, but with Venom versus Carnage, it was fucking terrible. And it's everything outside of Spider Man is is going to be terrible. They'll they'll take their time and probably do well with Spider Man. But are like Craven a fucking movie with you wouldn't even get a TV movie with Craven the Hunter. <laughs> okay, oh, so they like backward ass plan right now. I think is to just get venom craven and spider-man all into a universe right they want to why see... you've okay. got because no, they're no, trying to be the mcu, and the MCU Avia is Avia is Avia to Red the has wanted a sinister six since fucking raimi's time yes for they've tried years. twice over there they wanted a venom for 20 years and that guy is just not letting go you want to know why he's not letting go because that's what he has he has control he has somewhat some control over those rights with amy pascal so they're not ever Aviara, do you? Uh, what was that? You're talking about Avi Arad? He's the one that looks yes, Venom, yes. right? He's the yeah. one who, I mean, yeah. Kevin Feige kind of screwed over for the MCU. He, uh, Kevin Feige <sighs> pulled it. You know the whole story. I mean, a Avi Arad, Arad has always Arad. been famously a dick, but mm -hmm. dude's been around. So, like, his name's on the anime, the all the, the X Men animated series, Spider Man animated series. Guy was part of Toy Biz. So, the guy's been around forever. And, uh, if my memory serves, Mm -hmm. Kevin Feige was starting the MCU. He wanted to bring Avi on. Avi supposedly didn't want to take part of it, but then Kevin went, Kevin went around his back and just basically stole all his contacts. Well, he nearly basically called him Kevy. Kevy. <laughs> Kevy was basically a producer in Hollywood, right? This big fan, this guy who used to read the comics till we found out later he never read the fucking comics. He was more of a Star Wars fan than a Marvel fan. And uh, so he started the MCU, but he started with uh, with all of all these people and comic people and then he got rid of all those people because he started thinking this is not me it's the kevin feige show it's the kevy show Kevy. And, uh, it's been the kevy show since civil war civil war arguably the last great mcu film I think infinity war really good ones infinity wars infinity really war yeah good. I, I would put civil war a little above infinity war Oof. Well, I, I, heard too, guys, but... I heard you guys talking Avengers is above Civil War, dude. I heard you guys the first Avengers movies above Civil War. Just did. I think that's uh, uh it's it's tough it. for me. Yeah, I Just think so. I love the the big payoffs in Civil War, but Avengers to me is like tight as a drum almost. Like the, the, the comic book movie. Film. You have comic book he heroes fighting a villain with a bigger villain out there as a big battle is a good build up it's just a straight up pure comic book well, is, war. Is, this a, is, this a, is this a gay New Zealander a kiwi fruit well I'll, we'll ask you you're the expert I'm only gay mate I'm not part of what um, makes Avengers impressive as well he was is straight <laughs> the best uh, the best Hulk movie the best Black Widow movie and the best yes. Loki movie that was straight absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, it I, feels like I, all three of them, and it's just like, damn, and they never got better, <laughs> and they never got better. So, I like civil, no disrespect to Civil War, which is well, no disrespect movie. to like Iron I Man. I think there's so you know. little difference between the movies, though. I mean, we, we are talking Nat's fucking pubes fucking, when it yeah, comes yeah. to the, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're parsing to kind of put to kind of put like Civil War third uh, with Avengers Infinity War above to me just seems. You could you can mix and match your top five, okay? You it's fine. It's, it's okay. We're not going to judge. We'll judge a little bit, but that's okay. Just but I think I. But I mean, I go completely against Mauler on this because I think Winter Soldier is the best. You don't. You need to say Mauler goes against everybody on this. <laughs> like, uh, every Winter love Soldier Winter is Soldier. is yeah, it's uh, top three MCU film for sure, without a doubt. I go back and forth. Depends on the mood, right? Because if you want a little more sure. fun, you go Guardians 1, right? Uh, we're, we're, besides the Avengers. And uh, then if you want a little more intrigue. But see, that was a great example. Winter Soldier, Civil War, 
Guardians. Those are different genres within the superhero medium. And now they're all gobbledygook poo poo. Well, we were lucky to get them. Honestly, you look back and you're like, fuck. It was, it's, it's neat that they managed to escape the fucking nightmare before it started up in there. Yep. Scarlett Johansson got a nice payday from uh, from Marvel. <laughs> when she sued him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they settled out of court. Oof. And then she said, I'll never fucking go back. And, yeah, I'm never, <laughs> yes. But I tell you what, if she appears in... Uh, Avengers or whatever. Avengers, Avengering time. It's Avengers time. I think uh, I, I, I could see her turn up. I think it's infinitely funny that loads of people are now talking about how multiverse needs to stop, and that the most people are going to allow is like uh, beyond the Spider Verse being done next year, and then that's it. And it's like, yeah. guys, they they're building up to their huge multiverse story at Marvel. They're not done for like another five years at least, possibly six. Uh, <laughs> like, I think six twenty twenty nine. Yeah, and it's probably possibly it twenty again and again. <laughs> it's so fucking hilarious. It's like, well, we're done with this. It's like Marvel are not done with this. Like, they're, they're very busy with this. Okay, Being okay. The, 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 the chat movies. is screaming, hmm? screaming for a poll for uh, as to the best Marvel movie. So I'm going to well, put up gotta, a poll. We got to put in a top four or five. Uh, I think five. All I right. Well, best Marvel in... movie. Throw in, you got to put in Winter Soldier because everyone's loving that. Um, yeah, well, uh, okay, should we go Avengers? Go Avengers, Avengers, yeah. Uh, then we'll go um, Winter Soldier. Sure. Yep. Uh, Civil War. Then we'll go Civil, Civil War. War. Yeah. Guardians, Guardians okay. 1. Right. Guardians uh, 1 is good, yeah. And then you want Guardians 1. You could put an Guardians. Iron Man. And Iron Man. It, yeah, you'd have to put but, it. But that's it. Where's Infinity War then? I think Infinity oh, War. Oh, shit. Okay, put Infinity War, I guess. Oof. Above who? So I think above Guardians, but I mean that's just me. No. We need more than five, <laughs> but we can't. It's max out. Because how can you have not have Iron Man on here? Yeah, it feels like I Iron Man should be on. Iron there. Man before Infinity War because Infinity War ends at a cliffhanger, and and the the second part isn't good. Mm -hmm. So Iron Man. We need to do um, a, a, a leadership movie. board or what do they call you like a tournament or something? Oh, you can only have four. You can only have four choices. Oh, that's I it, Max. I'm, we I'm, have. Four, we we do. As can we do two fours and then take the top two of both and put them in the new four? I'm gonna okay, build... all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do two fours and then the top two okay. go into the final. Oh, this okay. is all coming together. Right? I, was okay. gonna, I was gonna pull a drunk three PO and look at two separate chats and use that as a consensus for everything and say everybody agrees with me. <laughs> we should split them up. Like <laughs> you know the... what I'm talking about. <laughs> Right, so everybody hates me it's like two people said they yes they, they hate him when he does shit like that i just go yes they do because <laughs> i'm not fucking fueling your ego you fucking silly tall man <laughs> we love him we should um you silly tall them... man that needs validation from everyone shut up <laughs> split them up, uh, like in a in a way so like you know like winter soldier and civil war put them in uh, different i'm gonna ones. put the let's put let's put Avengers and that Civil War together. Smart, I agree. But, with, but, but, with Winter Soldier and Guardians. What would be so what I'm trying to say is that one has Winter Soldier, one has Civil War, one has Avengers, one has Infinity War, one would have Iron Man, the other would have what's like what's like kind of the opposite or similar to Iron Man? What's like a solo movie we'd put in there? Another one that's pretty good uh, in the MCU. First Avenger, but that's me. I think first I don't mind putting that in there. We gotta fill yeah. it anyway. <laughs> well, we gotta have the Captain America separate then. So whichever one the Winter Soldier's got, the other one has got um Iron Man. All first right. Avenger. Oh Captain uh, Marvel. Uh, okay, I think Avengers, Winter Soldier, Civil War. Uh, no. Avengers, Winter Soldier, Guardians, and Iron Man. For Iron Man. No way home. That's Iron the first Man. No, no first, way home is a Sony. Well, that's the first four. So we can still throw in. It's part of the MCU. Guardians, that's the first. That's the first and poll, and the two Man. top from that will take and put into the final. All right. All right let's, so, do, let's, the, do, let's do this one first. Boosh. Yeah. First one is up. We'll let that go while we work on the next one, right? Yeah. Which, which is going to be War, Civil War, Infinity um, War, Civil War, uh, um, First Avenger. Okay. And no way home. Ooh, okay, we could go with no way home. 
This seems solid, yeah. I feel like First Avengers is not going to be. Yeah, I know. Three. I know the first Iron Man movie is not MCU. <laughs> well, it is MCU, but it, yeah, whatever. You know, you guys get it. You you, you, you know. know. You don't play fucking silly buggers. <laughs> well, yeah, because there's Paramount MCU and then there's Disney MCU, and they are very. Oh wow! Oh wow! Iron Iron Man is winning. Iron Man's going to get a lot Ooh. of love. Good movie. I like My how close top it is. Two though. from there would be Winter Soldier and. Mine, my movie oh, Avengers. That second one's a tough one. My movie Avengers and probably Iron Man, but Guardians could take it away from Iron Man, maybe. But I gotta have Avengers. I, I think best trilogy obviously is Captain America. That's the best trilogy. The, who would compete with that? Um, the most solid. It's Captain, like yeah, Civil War. Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier First, first Avenger. Avenger, fuck yeah. Not Easily the best trilogy. Not even close. Easily the best trilogy. Well, if you expand out of the MCU, then it becomes it, it just superheroes, not like Lord of the Rings or anything. You have, I'm trying to think of anything that would beat it, like X-Men, <laughs> Blade. Okay, okay so, so we gotta, we got to do, we can't, we got to do this. Uh, Mauler, since you're, yes. you're conversing, mm -hmm. you've got to pick your top two from there. Ooh. Well, no, I thought that the, we take the top two from the. No, crowd, we are, right? we are, but I'm asking. I want your votes. Okay, mine would be Avengers for sure, and a gun to my head. I've got to choose Winter Soldier, Guardians, or Iron Man. I think I'm gonna go. I want to go with Iron Man right now. That could change at any time, but I want to go with Iron Man. Okay, Gary, you got to pick two. Avengers and Iron Man. Cool. <laughs> Okay, I yeah. would have to go Winter Soldier and Iron Man. Okay. No. <laughs> Win <laughs> Look, I'm going to have to go Winter Soldier filmed. and Avengers. Winter okay. Soldier and Avengers? Okay. Right, the reason, the, the, the reason going for the Avengers is because getting all of those people in one place being brilliant at the same time together Britain, while having Loki also be fucking brilliant. Yeah. Is Britain an incredible thing. For six pence. Six pence. Six pence. That's ridiculous. That is so a that shilling. Mean, then... Is it? No. Shilling and penny. Yeah. yeah. No, that, I'm assuming that means then the clear winner or winners, because we're taking two from this, are Avengers and Iron Man. Uh, well, it, I mean... We'll give it. We'll give it what five more minutes. We'll give it until quarter two. So you got five more minutes to vote, and okay. it looks like Iron Man's going to clearly go to the next round, and uh, Winter Soldier and Avengers are, are jostling for the next spot. Next list is like I said: Infinity War, Civil War, First Avenger, No Way Home. Right? Correct. And then the winner of those. No. Oh no! Oh no! Sorry, sorry. Say again. Next list: Infinity War, Civil yep. War, First yep. Avenger, No Way Home. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That one's actually... I'll be interested to see what the crowd go with on that. That's tough. That's a tough well, I know thing. what my choices are, but... <laughs> I know definitely one of my choices. I'm definitely it's civil. It's safe to pick the, the best MCU film now because we're not going to get any more. So, yeah. I mean, no, there there won't be that. anyone that beats them now. <laughs> no. well, you, you don't have to put... Apart from No Way Home, which is a Sony film, you don't have to put anything after the end of Phase 3. Because <laughs> that, that ain't winning shit. You saw that Variety article where they're like, uh, we need to, it, there's superhero fatigue is happening, but we just need to stop making bad movies. For one, Variety goes down the alt-right <laughs> pipeline. Wow. Um, and uh, as as Drinker said, that is some stunning journalism right there. Uh, and uh, yeah, we are the media now, bitches. Look media. at me. Look, Look at me. We, we are the media now. Media now. But yeah, there's a whole article from Variety about superhero fatigue. They're just talking about it now. Um, right when it's too late. Uh, I'll just pop the link in the private chat. Blade is not in the MCU, boo! <laughs> Stop it! This is what happens when you let people get out of control. I got my, I got my son. Crisis. I got my son the Crisis series so he can read it in its 
proper form in comic books, not in a fucking trade or anything. So he can see it. So he can Let's read have a it. Poo, see, know what a good multiversal story is. It was great. Crisis was wonderful, man. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> There's a lot of lot of good heroes that got bumped off. Barry Allen died in it. Supergirl died in it. Um, Green Arrow, original Green Arrow with red, with red hat, hat died in it. Um, old Superman, didn't he die in it as well? All carnage, a lot of carnage, a lot of carnage, a lot of. But it was because it was a colossal event about tidying shit up. Look at this: when comics were comics and things were dynamic, the, the late great George Perez. George oh, Perez. Um. Oh, oh damn! Just oh, sorry. Just, just as again. I. Uh, mm. We have to acknowledge uh, we lost a fucking giant too. Oh, here's here's the proper blue beetle. By the way, look at this. Yes, Ted Cord. Comics were uh, dynamic. Um, rest in peace, John Romita Senior. Yeah, John Romita Senior, man. I mean, ninety one, incredible knock, great knock. But you know what a talent to lose. Yep. I mean, forever, forever the greatest Spider Man. Uh, not artist. yeah the, no. he drew for me the definitive spider-man like he was i was at the tail end of his run when i saw yeah. Just you know he was just like the costume that they're using uh they used in uh, uh for um tom holland spider-man is a variation of his costume which i greatly prefer you know the, the eyes the wider webs mm. uh yeah it's and at the end of at the end of No Way Home, they put him in the uh, the original costume, proper costume. Yeah, yeah. in the proper Spoderman costume. It's pretty the first movie has a they got the black bands and stuff. I'm looking because I got a life size version of it, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's closer than I mean. I love the Toby costume, and uh, and I even like the amazing uh, the second one in Amazing Spider Man. I like that because that's like the ultimate Spider Man costume. I thought that one was pretty good. The the costume in the first Amazing Spider Man was shit. It was total fucking shit. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, but um, oh yeah. the the first Amazing Spider mm. yeah, it's a terrible costume. It's awful. Mm. It's not a good film though. Neither was the second. Well, uh, yeah, which was better? Oh, first one's better. I'd take the first one over the second one. Yeah. Second one was diabolical. Absolutely. I, I need to rewatch them if I give, give an opinion. I remember them both being terrible. <laughs> yeah, They're I mean, I good. watched them semi-recently. I probably watched them both about six months or so ago. Six, eight months ago. And compared to the shit that we're getting now, uh, they were actually surprisingly tolerable. But... Um, but in terms of what we had with Toby, you could tell that they were they were so far behind. But uh, yeah, comparative to what we've seen, uh, you'll be surprised at probably how much um, you 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 like them more than you remember them. Wow. Okay, That's first good. poll is over. Time's up. Yeah. Things first can poll always poll is over. The results are in. Iron Man is going through to the final with thirty six percent. My God. Being joined by Avengers with 26, uh, 36%, Avengers with 26%, Winter Soldier 24%. Those were tight like Tiger. Guardians only brought in 11%. So the next one is Infinity War. Next is uh, First Avenger. First Avenger. The mm. next one is Civil War. And the uh, the next option is going to be No Way Home. So is it what? No Wakanda Forever? No Wakanda No. No Black Panther? <laughs> and we'll let that run to the hour. So you got 15 minutes to vote. All righty. Uh, on, before, we'll go into this. We'll go into this later. Um, Mola. Yes. Since you went first last time, you can go first. Hey, that's issue seven of Crisis. Death of Supergirl. The original car is around. Get the back. Oh. And then the superpower toys on the back. Those were the best. I love the superpower toys. I had. I only had one. I had Green Lantern. You didn't have Batman? I, no, because I only had one and I bought it when I was 21 years old. Well, they, they made In Brighton. Jumbo. When I was in Brighton with my girlfriend at the time. No. Hmm? Wait, as did you say no war home? No, no. 
no Everybody way. translated. I don't know why. I think he said no, no war no, home. I put no war home. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm ending the poll. No I'm war. ending the poll and I'm starting it again. This said... Infinity war. Look. Look. <laughs> I'm trying to do two things at once. Very hard. It is for a man. First Avenger. Hey, did you put in there you chat. Civil way. Civil way. <laughs> and no war home. No. Oh, sorry. Spoilers. No way. Okay. There wow, you go. You now it. you've got to the hour. Oh, Barry Allen uh, being consumed by the speed force. Happens a lot. Because he just, he just went to, he just went so far. So quick. Okay, you got to the hour. You got 12 minutes. That's plenty. You got 12 minutes. Plenty. Plenty time. Have a quick look at this. Uh, while that's going on, then, let's have a quicker look at this uh, this article. Uh, variety. Ask, um, hmm? Everybody, what they Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Shit, 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 shit. Morley, Morley, two. Nah. What are your top two? Well, all right. Let's have a look at these. Infinity War. Oh, it's pretty good. First Avenger. Oh, it's pretty good. Civil War. Oh, it's pretty good. No Way Home. Oh, it's pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> I'm actually kind of right now in line with what the uh, what the chat's doing to it. Um, mm -hmm. Though I would, since am I picking two? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What would be your yeah. two to go C to the Civil final? War and Infinity War? Then yeah. Okay. Gary, what are my choices again? Give them to me. Uh, you have Infinity War, mm -hmm. Captain America: First Avenger, mm -hmm. Avenger: Civil War, mm -hmm. or Spider-Man: No Way Home. Civil War. An Infinity War, I guess. Damn. Down goes Somebody no way just home. said, damn it, as you took away my no war home vote. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way home is really fun and good. It's fun. Gimmicky. You know. Like I almost, dude, I get came really close to saying first Avenger. Very close to saying first Avenger. Mm -hmm. Over Infinity War. I mean, it's a great movie. Really underrated movie. Definitely no, underrated. Okay. For I'm sure. switching it. I'm switching it. First Avenger. First Avenger. <laughs> uh, Red Skull. Okay. It's got the. I, I, I got to go with the crowd here. I agree with the crowd. Infinity War, Civil War for me. Civil War First Avenger or First Avenger. I'm Civil War it. First Avenger. Civil, Civil War First Avenger. Civil Civil First War, Avenger. the barbecue, First the barbecue Civil war. Civil war, no way home. I've yeah. seen I've seen that porn. It's it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, so while that's sizzling. Mm. Scissoring. Let's uh or scissoring, like an episode of Batgirl. Yep. <clears throat> If there was superhero the fatigue though, is real, says uh, Variety. The Cure make better movies than The Flash. Well, wouldn't, if the, if the, okay, Variety, can I just dissect your title very quickly? If there is superhero fatigue, better movies wouldn't help because there's superhero fatigue. So what you're actually saying is we need better movies else. than The Flash. Full stop. <laughs> just in general, yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Quick question: What was uh, Variety's review of The Flash? Mm. I, I don't know. Like I, uh, sure I liked it. Variety The Flash review. Let's have a look. Uh, the Flash review. Ezra Miller is on a bender of high anxiety in a movie that starts strong. What? Starts strong. And grows overwrought. No, okay. that's the wrong oh, way can... round. There you go. That is the oh, wrong yeah. way round. I thought they liked it, but I guess they didn't. Uh, they're um, they don't give it a score. Uh, their summing up is the thing is, none of it makes a lot of sense in the flash. The <laughs> multiverse of possibilities that opens up by toying with the past becomes an excuse to throw everything but the back cave sink at an audience, despite the vividness of its star. The okay. vividness? I know. The movie steamrolls Ezra Miller's personality as it goes along. The climactic battle against General Zod with its kamikaze bat playing death. Spoilers. 
spoilers. Uh, it blew, it's plumes of black smoke rising from the ground. It's overblown sound and fury is working too hard to engulf us after a story that did a nifty job of beguiling us. For a while, Ezra Miller brings it, but in the end, they deserve better, and so do we. I never want to watch a movie that you want to see, Variety. It's <laughs> a good litmus test. Yeah. They 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 basically they got the whole thing flipped reverse wrong. God, yeah, I can't remember. One of the big uh rags liked it. I can't remember which one. Oh, hi, Rags. What? Rags? Rags. Well, um, Deadline, Variety, and Hollywood Reporter are all owned by the same company, by the way. Mm. Uh okay. At least they're so I find I find Deadline to be probably the most credible out of that lot. Yeah, but they write a lot of similar shit with Variety. Uh, Variety is the one e the most easily sold off. We, we famously for the Rings of Power, Amazon is their, their oh. you know their big. Now that it's over, we can tell the truth. Remember that headline. Yeah. Now that it's over, let's let's be honest. Never forget that, folks. We we're admitting to lying to you. Holy shit. Uh, superhero fatigue is a phrase that tends to make devoted movie lovers swoon with rapture. What? Okay, swoon with rap? What? That doesn't make any sense. Hey, remember Bloodstone? Dude, that spaceship on the fucking right-hand side, man. Uh, this is awesome. Remember Bloodstone? He Bloodstone made it into the MCU, folks. You want to know where? Where? The ship. Remember that werewolf by night ha uh, no. Halloween special that everybody Never watched loved? it. Never watched it. Yeah, there was a, a there was a, a, a gender swapped version, oh. daughter version of Bloodstone. How do you, Gary? How do you swim with rapture? How do I what? How do you quote swoon with rapture? How do I swoon with rapture? Yeah. I'm not gay, so I don't know. Okay, Molly, how how do you swoon with rapture? I've got my gay team way? on it. Uh, they're they're currently trying to synthesize some kind of result in their lab. Um, I'll tell you as soon as they got it. Best I can ask for, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Jesus Christ, this guy's fucking retarded. Who wrote this? Owen, Owen, Gleberman, Owen, you. How do you swoon with rapture, Owen? Can you explain that? If you're someone who cares about movies, who cares about cinema, cinema. I know they cinema. did. They did it in italic, so they wanted it to be. You know, the very prospect of superhero fatigue inspires you to think: Yes, there's hope. People will get tired of this shit. Well, I'm. I am. I am hoping that. I admit. But let's be honest. That's probably wishful thinking. In the last 20 years, led by Marvel, but by no means limited to Marvel, comic book movies have infiltrated our culture and our consciousness to the point that they're now part of who we are. Um. Okay. <laughs> How you doing you there? Uh, oh, wait, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's just speak for yourself sort of thing. It's like, yeah. you're right there, mate. <laughs> They're a part of me now. They're a part of me now. What? Well, okay. They're inside of me. Oh. Oh, they, they probably are inside of him, admittedly. Deep inside of me. Um, if you ask any number of people, especially dudes of a certain generation to name their favorite film, they will look at you and say, Star Wars, often with a smirk that's really saying, Star Wars, of course. Well, I think the Empire Strikes Back is the best. That's the that's that's better movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty cool movie. Very cool movie. Yeah, there is no Star um, Wars. Uh, but I, I think I like the Raiders of the Lost Ark. More than Star Wars. More than Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. More than Empire? Yep. It's the greatest movie. It's the greatest single movie ever made. If you if if I if you said there's two movies, there's two you only have the choice of two movies to watch. It's Empire Strikes Back or Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders, without a fucking question. I, I think I'd have to take Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm going with Empire. <laughs> okay. 
Raiders of the Lost Ark. Blew me away more as a kid. Uh, still love Star Wars just as much. Oh, th- this was back in the time where the only argument. Who doesn't want to see Marion's Bush again? Uh, me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, Raiders was. Cool. Poll! <laughs> People Raiders want to do cool. a poll. We're busy. <laughs> Raiders was a nerd thing that was cooler. Absolutely cooler. Star Wars was fucking rad. Not gonna, not gonna deny that at all. No, it's amazing. It's abs- uh, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back the and bits of Return of the Jedi from film of all time. It is the Beatles of nerddom. I get it, but Raiders was like the Rolling Stones, a little cooler. You know, that's it. I, I mean, I'm going with Raiders because uh, it's it's a, it's a darker story. When I say darker story. I mean that th- there's. I just find there's a little bit more to it, a little bit more meat on this, on that, on those bones. Nothing. Empire is one of my favorite movies of all time. It was easily in my top three movies of all time. But Raiders is up there as well, and Last Crusade is up there as well. Raiders is way more pulp because it's based on the the serials, the Saturday morning serials that most. God, I remember when I brought that up one time, somebody's like, "Are you talking about breakfast serials?" I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm not that retarded. I know what you mean. Uh, and I'm like, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> breakfast. Series. No, I am not. Uh, oh, let's carry I'm on. Not. Let's carry on before this guy, yeah, fucking destroys us with retardation. Yeah. As Star Wars, of course. These aren't just Star Wars fans. They're Star Wars fundamentalists. Oh my. I'm not sure what that means, but so, yes. You know what? The access media cannot resist taking a shot at fans. They hate you. They've always hate you. And I learned that very le- early on at the comic store when I had some access media people from CBR shopping in my Jesus store. Christ. And I saw their attitude towards fans. I'm like, well, that's weird because that's who you that's who pays your bills. That's who you want to court is the fans. No. They saw it as no, we court the creatives and provide the fans with what they need to hear, not what they like to hear, but what they need to hear through my lens. Yeah, it's a very interesting point of view that fucking quote unquote, and a lot of them can call themselves, I am a journalist. You're not a fucking journalist. This guy's a fuckwit. You're an entertainment reporter at best. You're not a fucking journalist. The line uh, that they say after this is, who built the seed beds of their imaginations on the original trilogy? He has no clue. He's no clue. My love of fantasy originated from reading Anne McCaffrey's Dune books when I was young, from playing Jackson Livingston fighting fantasy books, from watching Conan the Barbarian, Red Sonia, fucking Beastmaster, all of these fucking types of movies... That's Excalibur. where my major, uh, my fancy imagination came fuel from. Star Wars added to that for sure, but it's only part of a multitude, multitude of different little bits from different fantasy elements here and there. Raiders of the Lost Ark is another one because it's it's full of supernatural um, imagery. It's full of supernatural stories, yet set in in a grounded real world as well. Uh, Star Trek, another one. Battlestar Galactica, another one. Uh, watching Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, all of this kind of stuff, all Not of true. it contributed, contributed to this. This person, Owen, Owen, you're fucking retarded. You, you don't, you, you're a journalist and you don't know how to do a modicum of fucking research. You base all your opinions on fucking secondhand crap that you probably read in a, a variety article from 10 years ago because you can't formulate a true, well rounded opinion. Yeah. It's not Jeez. just about Star Wars. More, more, more. Star Wars is yeah, the first movie. Star Wars, it, yeah, it's everything that it goes with Star Wars all the way back. And other people have talked about this. All right. This isn't the first time this has been discussed, but it goes back, you know, like, oh, you like Star Wars? How about Star Trek? I like Star Trek. Did you like Twilight Zone? I like Twilight Zone. Did you like Space 1999? Sure. Blake Seven? Yeah. Doctor, oh. it's all it, it gets just 
it, it's the sum of all things. Star Wars was just sure. the, the pinnacle at the time, but we were watching Logan's runs, plan, Logan's run, Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Fucking when Jason Flash and the Argonauts. Out, Jason on the uh, anything Harry Housen. I fucking watched uh, uh, over and over and over again. That was the best shit. Ulysses uh, 31, movies. Cities yeah. of Gold, uh, fucking Musker Hounds, all of the, all of the everything. Oh, okay. Barbarella. So you know that Doctor making... Who being a Gary. huge one uh, yeah, about uh, the 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 sort of hatred and like bitterness. Um, I, I I know there's at least three people in chat who watched the newest season of Rick and Morty. I uh, I happened to check it out out of curiosity because I don't like it anymore. But um, there's a character in that who, in an episode where there's lightsabers going around, loads of Star Wars references, he said he like implies himself to be like the Star Wars fan number one. He's complaining about it. He even says like Disney ruined it, Disney destroyed it. Uh, I hated it even before Disney ruined it, but they ruined it. And like another character is uh, is like you know, man, you got like a lot of pent up rage. You got you're just like super angry about it all. And he says, well, why should I have to put up with thirty mediocre shows with bad CG? And then the person says, uh, you know, do you think you could do better? And he goes, yes, I would have characters with lightsabers for eyes. And uh, those 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 ideas always get shot down. And then he's like scared. And um, it's just I was just watching. It and I was like, wow, that was really shit. Like y your joke is, look, this is what they do. They complain about. I was thinking to myself, like, you know, Obi-Wan, Boba Fett, Mandalorian. Like, what do you think the major complaints were? Bad CG? No, no, you fucking no. won't. No, and when I talked to the WGA negotiator, who admittedly is a talented writer, okay, but when, when he was trying to strengthen his position on, on being a collective, right, you know, he's like, we can do what other people can't. And I'm like, well, there was a time you could make that argument, but not anymore. Now there's other people out there who aren't part of your little guildy club who are better, who are fucking better. And now they don't have any of that, uh, that have to suck up to a bunch of producers and shit and have to uh, pass through uh, some kind of diversity and inclusivity minefield uh, to get a job. They can just go out and do that shit now. So this, uh, you know, writers are still on strike. Does anyone give a shit at this point? This is like no. practically out of the fucking news. They should be really fucking worried about this. But they're not. Right, we just had we just had extraction two drop. <laughs> Why yeah, do we? Well, a bunch a bunch of shit's dropping now, so we're not going to notice it until next year. But it's going to be COVID all over again. There's going to be nothing except for Rings of Power and House of the Dragon season two. So one of the shows will be probably good. Can't say for sure it'll be good, but and uh, I can say for sure the second uh, one will be absolute dog shit. So, but that's it. We'll have a couple of movies, but everything's been delayed. Everything's been delayed now. I got a question for you after I give the poll results. Okay. That ties into the poll results. Mm -hmm. So surprisingly enough, or unsurprisingly enough, the uh, the winner uh, the winners are Infinity War and Civil War. Mm -hmm. uh, thirty six and thirty two percent respectively. First Avenger nineteen percent. No Way Home eleven percent, which I, I I go along with. Uh, I think No Way Home. I gave No Way Home a seven out of ten. I think when I watched it. It was fun, but it was fun. That, you know, it was it wasn't a great, great movie. The cameos were done well and all that, but it was a seven out of ten film. All in all, you know, good, good, because that's what seven out of ten is, good. Uh, but not beyond that. But the other, the others, I think, go above and beyond. Now then, do we want to do the Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, Empire Strikes Back poll first, and then have the final? Yes, sure. we can break okay. it up a bit. Uh, so my question is you want to based off the result. Hey, you want to throw another two in there? We can find them. No, 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 no. My no. my question is, we've just seen the poll, the winner of the poll, Infinity War, Civil mm -hmm. War. Yeah. Uh, in the other poll, going through to the final, Avengers. Right. So there's three Avengers movies going through to the final. Okay. Well, Civil War is not an Avengers movie, but technically, yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, it's I a it's yeah, technically yeah, yeah. a Captain America movie, but it's basically an Avengers movie. Um. You've seen the roster for the next Avengers film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is who the fuck is going to give a shit about the next Avengers film? Hey, can I promote my own tweet and be gay? Sure. 
uh, right before I, the show. Yeah. There was an article um, that came out from some fucking rag uh, that says, why, Cap- uh, why Captain America, Brave New World? Should I show it? I sure. Show it. Yeah. yeah, I'll share it. Sure. Just put put into the share right now. This goes it along with the Avengers thing, right? I just don't. Oh my god! I gotta refer to my tweet and myself and my tweet is like some of the, I will just say, worst shit ever. Okay, not oh, really that. Yeah, a little too much. But um, uh, why Captain America: Brave New World will be different from other recent Marvel movies? A Captain America movie without Captain America is different. It certainly is. Now, in about forty-eight hours, I'm gonna get destroyed by a bunch of fucking MCU bot stands. Uh, not happening right now, but it will. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. But the same could be said about the Avengers. You're not going to have any Avengers in the Avengers movie. That, uh, did, did you see that banner? We showed it on FNT briefly. I, I could not see it on my laptop. With uh, Our screen was like two inches wide. <laughs> Couldn't see shit last Friday. So thanks for watching the show, everybody. <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you. I couldn't it see it. It was a good time. It was a good time. Um, it was a good time. We, I, we were supposed to get to other topics. And we just ripped on Flash for two hours. We it was really great. did. It was a good time, man. I fucking so, that is yeah, old, I mean, I had a bone um, to pick I, with I, us. I had, I had a, I mean, I, well, I mean, I, I clearly, I came out. I came out as somebody who is desperately chuffing some copium because uh, Michael Keaton is Batman. But the film's terrible. It's not a good film. Where'd you get? Michael Keaton, like seeing there were him that I liked. fly there around were that I liked. and like punch people, is yeah. what we wanted to see in the Burton films. We understood he was like really restricted and couldn't do it, especially with the costume, right? Uh, so it's not a dig at Burton per se, but um, the, the only thing I'll dig at Burton is the reason Batman Returns is a much better film than Batman eighty nine, and I mean much better film is he learned he found an editor because the editing in Batman eighty nine. Is awful. It's it's bad. And, and like well, he's, he's doing that, a lot of Dutch angle. He's trying to you know. Yes, he's no, trying to do like no scene symmetry. Show there's no scene symmetry. Like scenes just end and begin. Sure. And as an editor, it makes makes me crazy. Listen, there's a, there's another great movie with awful editing. Those, it's still a great movie. Doctor No has some of the worst editing I've ever seen. But I love that movie. I fucking adore it because Sean Connery just rules. But it's but the editing is bad. It just is. But it was in the '60s, so it's fine. Uh, and you, in, in the 80s and 60s, you were editing with film, which is way fucking harder. I couldn't do it. You know, I edited. Well, yeah, because you, 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 you're I cutting and you're yeah. stooshing. Oh. Um, but, do, you know uh, what, do you know what movie was going to be a fucking disaster that was saved in editing? You've got to say Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. I think that's a myth at this point. Well, um, I think I think what the myth is, is that the movie was awful and it was saved in editing when in actuality it was just a well edited movie it was a well edited movie the part of the myth that's true is george missed marcia and gary kurtz mm. once they were out of the picture george wasn't the same star wars wasn't the, it's not the same star wars it's it's fully george lucas's star wars you can see a difference in from empire to jedi even though they're different directors george is still there George just didn't want to do the day day to direct. Plus, he was going through the divorce at the time, and uh, they're just different films. And then you see more of Jedi and Willow. You know what I mean? Then you see more of Willow and Jedi in Phantom Menace. There's just a couple of videos I've seen that have gone over a lot of what's like commonly accepted about the fate of Star Wars in like post production. That kind of opens up a bit more about what people believe and what is true and i remember being like oh shit i don't think i'm gonna be making claims about this anymore because i no longer <laughs> know for sure exactly what happened but it's a very popular theory right that george lost his uh his thing like the people around him that were willing to say no or to push things this way that way um but then you look at the prequels behind the scenes and you know everyone's talking to him and asking him questions and he's still responding to stuff so i don't know it's it, i just want to be careful about it sometimes because uh a lot of things can spread so easily. Like, I still feel guilty about the whole fucking Lion King Kimba shit. For like 10 years, I believe that was true until people lit, until I saw someone's video and I was like, oh shit, that's all a lie. Cool. Well, we don't know. No, I know. Uh, it's, you know, I prefer to. Uh, I, I 
yeah there's a lot of i mean just present them like hey this could be a myth this has been around for a long time could be an urban urban legend we don't know most things from hollywood are <laughs> bullshit, are total fucking bullshit they're fabricated fucking lies as a matter of fact that's what hollywood was built on they would change the name of an actor or an actress norma jean and create a persona for that actor uh kind of like influencers are doing right now um and that and that's still entrenched that's still entrenched um and it was almost better than getting to know them i i think it might have been better uh but it it le leads into like this new era we're, we're in this new paradigm where hollywood's not going to be able to survive it because now they don't people don't believe the access media the access media is losing money and they're starting to turn on them and stop being their lap dog and authenticity will win the day, which means, you know what? If a director comes out and says, hey, you hate that design, we'll change it. Let's let's talk about it. You know, that's the kind of shit that uh, instead of some director going, I'm going to make you what you need, not what you want. And it's like eh, there's like five guys in the world who can say that. And yeah, I was actually it. I was going to agree with you there on like the whole yeah, there are directors out there who they need to get full control because they're amazing, but really, how many of them are left? Handful. Really, handful. Um, so it, it's it's now a time where it's like you know, uh, don't conflate a few assholes which are everywhere uh, with all of fandom, and you know what? In return, we might not try to conflate the assholes that are in Hollywood with all in Hollywood, but that's yeah. really hard to do right now. It's really hard to do and that article we were the, the guy couldn't resist couldn't resist star wars fundamentalists you know what most star wars fans are really normal people who just want just good living normal ass lives normal they, fucking they lives. just want to be entertained man your fucking salary with with some living pay to paycheck and their one brief moment uh their couple of hours of enjoyment believe me i lived that life for a long time was oh yeah star wars or watching an hour of star trek or getting a vhs or buying a few comics when i could you know uh yeah yeah those 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 are the people you need to respect adore and appreciate and be grateful for it should be able to top your fucking gratitude list i get to write fake stories for a fucking living I get to make shit up with adult pretenders. We get to play pretend for a fucking living. That's the greatest job in the world. God bless America. But no, these motherfuckers, we're in a gal down. We're on strike. We need to get fair wages for all the shitty writers out there. No, no, you need to get rid of them. You need to get yeah. rid of them. Cut out the shit ones and get better pay for the good ones. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to proceed any further with that article after that. Yep. That's enough but, uh... for me. That poll is kind of hilarious. Gary, do you want to give a guess as to how the poll's doing? Oh no, I just saw. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> which one? The Empire. The new poll at the minute is Raiders. You can uh, only watch one film. Uh, Raiders: The Lost Ark or Empire? Hmm? Empire is probably killing Raiders. It's fifty-fifty. Really? Yep. It's surprising. <laughs> I just know how I feel. That's all, I, you know. That's Nearly 2,000 votes. You know, and there, there is only, there's now a 2% 4951. What's kind of interesting, though, like, my vote goes to Empire for this one, but if it was between the two trilogies, I might go with Indiana Jones because I kind of adore all three, while with Star Wars, that third one is a bit wonky. <laughs> it's a bit wonky, and it's your last one, and that makes all the difference in the world. Like the wonky, the arguably wonky Indiana Jones film, because there's only three, is Temple yes. of Doom, one that I've learned to appreciate over time. I still kind of love Temple of Doom. Yeah. I, I do too, especially how politically incorrect. Temple's a prequel. Now. Yeah. It's a prequel. It's a prequel. It's technically a prequel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, the, 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 the thing with, with Return of the Jedi for me, is yeah, there's wonky stuff. That Ewok shit is is fucking some shit. But when it's good, fuck me, is well, it amazing? It's, it's got it's, my favorite payoff of all the Star Wars in there. So period, yeah, like yeah, it's, it's half a ten out of ten perfect film and half a five out of a ten lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of yeah. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's weird. Um, so this comic right here. That's funny. My kid saw this. He's all, that's an old comic book. I'm all, you shut your mouth, boy. It's not old. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's almost 20 years old. Mm. 
Hey, you're cool. looking forward to Secret War, by the way. A yeah. show which Chris Gore, after two episodes, said, fuck this show on Film Threat. Well, I'm actually uh, going to be it was boring to watch and... it tonight. Hmm? Uh, gonna, uh, what's it out? Uh, it drops late tonight. Oh, God, fuck it. Well, you know what? Grace what? Randolph said it is the Andor of Marvel. Nobody's going to watch oh. it. So nobody's gonna watch it. That's true. There hasn't been fucking fuck all marketing. So, um, but hey, that means there's a chance it could be something I like. <laughs> so maybe I'm, I'll give it a shot. Six episodes. Okay. I doubt it though. So, Let me ask you a question, then, Mola. Do it. Just, just on pro on professional, on a Difficulty? professional level, do you lean more towards Grace Randolph or Chris Gore? Hmm. I don't know. Grace did say that they threw in a cat suit into the Mario movie to appeal to the Asians. So, you know, she. No, and she also said that Starro uh, <laughs> was killing too many brown people. Yeah, Starro didn't oh. kill enough white people. <laughs> yes. Didn't kill enough white people. <laughs> and she did spend an exorbitant amount of time on John Cena's cock. <laughs> So, okay. yeah, you know, I, I don't want to discount her, but yeah, I might go with, uh, <laughs> might go with Chris Gore, maybe, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this, you know the significance of this book, Mahler? It is the first time Captain America and Thor slept together. No, uh, that's a really good guess, though. But no, this is from when comics were still good. So this is a Mark oh. Millar book, Brian Hitch. This is Ultimates. This uh, this was, you know, uh, we had Ultimate Spider-Man, of course, Ultimate X-Men, and this is the Ultimates. It's, it was Marvel's, like, you know, first, well, not first, but first successful attempt at an alternate universe. And uh, it was a more grounded Avengers, and this is largely what the MCU is based off of. This mm. is, uh, you, you know, uh, Samuel Jackson, looking like Nick Fury, comes directly from this book. Mm comes directly from this book uh a little more hardcore version of the avengers a little more hardcore version of uh of cap the art is like dude Ooh. ryan hitch ryan fucking hitch ryan fucking hitch when he's on he's on and millar like just absolutely kills it in this book uh that's where the what's the uh like general story it's the formation of the Avengers and it starts out with cap and uh, see this, see this costume right here. That look mm. a little familiar. Yeah. From the first and Avenger. The, yeah. The so uh, it, it's, it's basically a, gr a more grounded version, a government version of the Avengers uh, instead of, you know, them living in a mansion and stuff. They're, they're a team. Some yellow flash. When Thor arrives, they're not really sure if he's a crazy person with superpowers or if he actually is a God. Like it's in question. Demigod. Uh, demigod. Um, Hulk is far more brutal. Far more brutal. Like, oh, so it's not based full of fucking soy then. Uh, eats people in the Ooh. beginning. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it, you know, it's yeah, it's crazy shit. Remember when the Hulk was going fucking ham? On the on the carrier, uh, when Hank he Pam, fought Thor, Hank was Pam was more it. brutal. Um, there's Black Widow. Ooh. There's Quicksilver and uh, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet and, Witch, yeah. There's Hawkeye. Uh, there's <sighs> Iron Man. Looks like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I was looking for my Secret Invasion books, and I came across all these like. There's a Mark Millar signed a second version. These books took forever to come out, by the way. Took years for it to finish. Uh, highly recommend it, Mahler. If you want to see where kind of the MCU came from, uh, Ultimates is a good place to, to go. Yeah. Um, it's funny, by the way, as bringing up when when Hulk was actually like like him and Thor fighting, and Thor had to like figure out how to get him off the carrier without killing everybody, like all of them were. He's just rampaging, sort of thing. And I was just thinking about how Age of Ultron and Avengers, they kind of did stuff. You know, like it was—I guess it was Whedon's goal to give you some serious fan service scenes, but to build them up through a whole bunch of mechanics. Like yeah. Iron Man and Hulk have a full-on one v one, but it takes mm -hmm. a while to earn that narratively. You know, mm -hmm. same for Thor and Hulk. Same for Thor, Iron Man, and Cap having their like 
triple fight sort of thing. And I was thinking about like, man, who, who's looking forward to when there's a misunderstanding and Captain Falcon fights Yelena for a few seconds? It's like, what? no, <laughs> like who the no. fuck is? Or, or how about when you, you uh, uh, Florence Pew? Oh, you didn't see it. Did you? You didn't watch Hawkeye, did you? No, <laughs> no, it dipped <laughs> after one episode. Right. Yeah, the whole the whole culmination of it is Florence Pugh's Black Widow beating up Hawkeye. Yay! Because she's mad about her sister's. Her that ending was shit for Black Widow. Where it's like Hawkeye was actually the one that killed your sister. Yeah, that makes total fucking sense. So well, no, it Avengers... wasn't. He was the one who was trying to stop her from fucking jumping. Well, this for me. All of the Avengers know the truth. I imagine that's public knowledge. They would have told everybody that Natasha gave her life to save the universe because <sighs> she did. So fucking stupid. But it's all stupid. It's been it's been stupid a long time. Yeah. Uh, let's end the poll. <gasps> The poll says after 3,300 votes, you can only ever watch one of these films. Which do you choose? The Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Empire Strikes Back, 52%. Raiders 52. of the Lost Ark, 47 That's still, that's tight like Tiger. That's excellent results. That's for, tight uh... like Tiger. So the final poll is best Marvel. I'm almost movie. Uh, sorry. There's so many Indiana Jones fans in the chat. You got an awful week coming soon. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know what? You know what's best? The best part about that is what? The Witcher season three premieres the same day. Oh, <laughs> I ain't watching that, Gary. You I ain't watching that either. No, nope. ain't watching it. Yeah, you are. I ain't watching it. Yeah, you are. No. You know, my friend. No. Me. As you'll play Gollum, but you won't watch which. I can't. I can't. Make Gary a deal. Uh, I get two months off Friday night tights. I don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You want two months off Friday night tights? Hey, Molly. Yeah. Hey, Molly. <laughs> yeah, but then you're going to make me watch the witch. Yeah. Now. That's okay. I didn't see the first two seasons. I don't know what the fuck's going on. That's okay. Okay, the poll is up. Best Marvel movie, Infinity War, Civil War, Avengers, and oh, Iron Man well. are the choices. Whoa. That's a, that's, a, that's a fucking heavyweight group of films yeah. there. But... Off they go. That's, that's a heavyweight nerdy, nerdy group of films. <laughs> that's a heavyweight nerdy look, group of films. Look at this cover, dude. Look at this cover. Fucking cover. You gonna eat the tank? He's gonna throw it. This is World War Hulk. It's fucking kind of awesome story. Is Yellow Flash still in the chat? What's up, Yellow Flash? Oh god, somebody put iron ore. I thought I put iron ore for a second, and I thought my <laughs> I thought my MMORPG had shone through. Woo! Do you want to do a round the horn of what us three? Yeah, Mola. We're in the final. We it's, have uh... Infinity War, Civil War, Avengers. And oh fuck's sake! Wait, did you fuck I one of them up? The pole. You did put Iron War. I did put. I put Iron War. <laughs> <laughs> My God! <laughs> All right, new pole. You fucks. Iron <laughs> War. Only X-ray girl knows how to work the poles. Okay. Hey, Infinity War. There's too many wars. Civil War. <laughs> we need to stop having wars. Stop warring with each other. Avengers. For one thing. What's that? War. <laughs> Iron War. <laughs> war. War. War never changes. Okay, the new poll is up. And we'll let that run until the hour. So you got 34 minutes. Alrighty. We're gonna let that go to the hour. So Molly, 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 Molly. The final is here. Mm -hmm. You can only choose one. one. All right. Well, uh, let's let's do let's eliminate. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. gonna eliminate. I'm gonna eliminate Infinity War first. Okay. I really do love the movie, but I've also got a lot of issues with it, and uh, obviously, as as Gary's mentioned as well about the cliffhanger stuff, it is the first of two parts, and the second part is kind of pissy. I'm just saying, you know. Okay. So it's it's like, 
we're voting, we're voting against on it. the films, though, Mauler. We're not voting I know. on. We're voting I know, on the film itself. Fair, like some of the things Doctor Strange says is, is bad, whether or not they concluded it well or not in Endgame, but they didn't anyway. So yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock that one out. <laughs> you ever read this? Okay. Past? No, read it. Then I'm gonna knock I'm out. Gonna get it and read it. It's fucking okay. amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna knock out Iron Man. I mean, send me the list of what I need to get around. Or Iron War. <laughs> Sorry, Molly. Um, I'm gonna knock War. out Iron Man because uh, as much as I love the film, I feel that Civil War and Avengers just have a lot more going on. Uh, I, I find they're a lot more layered and. Uh, they're juggling a lot more shit. I just find it a little more impressive. Though Iron Man does have the aspect of being the guy who kicked it all off. You know, it's an impressive sure. fucking movie. Civil War and Avengers. Oh, mm. my boy is Civil War, but I think I might go with Avengers on this because it's 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 uh, similar to Iron War. I keep really oh. saying <laughs> it. Kind of. I feel like Avengers is the one that made it all what it is today uh in the same way empire is responsible for what star wars is today in a bad mm -hmm. way kind of no no you know no fault to empire um and that's you know for good reason right avengers was kind of a cool moment of like oh wow that's really well written it's brought together a whole bunch of things everyone's really enjoying it and it's just a really nice time to be a fan of superheroes getting adapted because i think even the comic fans are loving it right you guys do. uh yeah <laughs> I, well I, I mean i think it, it got a good I think it just got a good all-round impression from people. So I'm going to go with Avengers. Okay. The Incredible Hulk. Do you guys remember? Or did you? Oh, you're probably too young. So this is like they, you put a record on, right? And you read along with a, it, it's got a full voice cast and everything. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Power That's record. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is what I listened to as a kid. There's a bunch of them out there. There's a bunch of DC ones. They're freaking fantastic. Gary. All right. There can be only one. Only one. What? A little, little more detail. You know? Infinity some, War. Civil War. Give us the meat uh, and give it to Avengers us and Iron War. <laughs> um, Avengers. This is actually an easy choice for me. Oh. I think the Avenger the is oh the why um, because it is in its purest form a comic book film that adapts Marvel in the best possible way as you stated earlier Mueller and I said this when I watched it that was the best Hulk movie that was the best Black Widow movie uh, it was the best team movie uh, everybody worked together as a team it built up to something. That wasn't the end all. It was a big enough fight, but it wasn't the end all. So you, it's open ended, but it worked perfectly as an as an enclosed film that was built up on kind of you know like not deep not in detail, but with the first Avenger on with with uh, with Phase One with Marvel, it had enough of them getting together at the right time, especially after fumbling a little bit with Phase Two. And getting uh well phase two with Iron Man two mainly, but yeah. uh and and Joss Whedon at his best, and I know like his name is Mud with a lot of people, but mm -hmm. dude, Joss Whedon read comics, new comics through and through, and it showed, and it showed his reverence for comics showed. One of the things, the fun facts about it, I remember is that uh I think it was the audio commentary that I found this from these the shot where it goes from Iron Man to Cap to like everyone else to hulk to thor all in one shot you know you move around the whole city watching them all fight like crazy um apparently like higher ups pushed to get that out because it was going to cost too much and joss whedon said something like this shot is the whole movie's point like right here this is like the main thing mm -hmm. it's like the equivalent of the double page spread of a fight you know and uh yeah you know i, I think he, i think gary's right that he, he had a lot of personal investment in comics so it helps with that adapting them and it's one of the best Iron Man movies, too. I won't say the second best, but I'll say it's one of the best. It's better than the two sequels, <laughs> for sure. It's it's a perfect team movie. And it's the right amount of superheroes. It's not too many. Uh, and you're fighting one focused bad guy and a bunch of henchmen. And that's what comic books are. It dropped us a couple of lines. It gave us uh, just enough for, for fan service. But it was a great... Obviously... When it came out, it blew everybody. I, I don't know what your expectations were. 
Mine were like, oh, I hope I, uh, it's not good. I still remember. I, I, I was blown the fuck away. I was like, why the hell did they hire the Buffy and Angel guy to do Avengers? See? And then, of course, it made more sense the more I thought about it. Because I was like, oh, Team Angel, Team Buffy. Like the I was, I was like, Team Firefly. Finally, when they announced him, I'm like, that's the perfect choice. That's the perfect choice. This yeah, is like, going to be a pretty good movie. I was super surprised, but then I was like, oh shit, he's actually really familiar with doing team ups and shit, and he knows how to do setups, payoffs, characters, juggling and stuff. Well, X Men Three could have hired him. Well, <laughs> we know that turned out. They didn't. You know, Should have, would have. And Joss is is a massive X Men fan. Massive X Men fan. Uh, it wrote Astonishing X Men, which was a hit comic book that was very fucking good, by the way. Well, Joss Whedon sort of lost a little bit of his sparkle with uh, Age of Ultron. Well, and uh, I think he lost a lot of the best. Like his best stuff is way earlier. I think like mm. Buffy, Angel, Firefly, and Avengers. That's like the let's say the best year of his work. But I will say, um, Age of Ultron. I don't even think he considers that much of his film. Okay. Like, uh, um, I don't want to be too biased though. Like by crediting him with all the stuff in it that's actually any good. Like there's some great dialogue in that film. And then, like, all the shit that's terrible, like, how forced a lot of uh, plot points are. Do you remember, like, Thor needs to take a bath so that he has his flash forward to Ragnarok, and it's like, what? And it's like, well, it's setting up Thor's next movie. And it's like, <laughs> okay. And then it's like, what the hell is the whole vision thing? As someone who didn't know about him from the comics at all, that was so random. It was like, this alien robot is suddenly joining us at the end of Act 2. I was like, why? And it's like, it's like, good Ultron. It's like, <laughs> What and it's like Paul, it's, it's it's Jarvis <laughs> and I was like, yes. why what what is happening? Um, yeah, you know, it, Age of Ultron is not very good. In fact, I I wouldn't call it bad. It's just that uh, it's pretty bad. I know I know that that's the film that made him want to stop working with Disney, right? Yes, that's that's where the falling out, like a massive falling out that affected yeah. Agents of Shield he, and everything else. It shouted at all the women he needed to shout at. <laughs> he ran out of women. To- because uh, he, uh, he was offered Infinity War and Endgame, wasn't he? Or whatever was they were called at the time. Yeah, yeah and he, he stayed in one end. Yep. Which is insane, right? To turn those down. So he was really fucking hated working on uh, Age of Ultron. Which is um, so weird to me. If he had like majority control of the first Avengers, why not do that again? Why why push in and be like, you got to set up this, 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 this. You got to do this. It reminds me of the whole like, oh, Sam Raimi, you've got to have Venom. You've got to make a Venom story now. Venom has to be in here. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Why it just but then again, on the reverse side of it, you could say that Tim Burton was given, I think he demanded full freedom for the script on Batman Returns. And despite the fact that I think I fucking love that movie, uh, it wasn't what the studio wanted, I guess, in terms of results, right? Everyone was like scared by it. <laughs> it's too dark. It's a very it's it's I Warden Brothers has always been that way. They're just like creatively fucking retarded. Mm-hmm. They don't I want to sell toys. Like, I, yeah, I saw the criticisms of that movie. It came out when I was locked up, so I came. Uh, so I, I'm hearing all the criticisms without seeing the damn movie. Then I saw the movie, and I'm like, "That was fucking awesome. That was absolutely awesome." What's why has everybody got a problem with this? Uh, it's, my reading, favorite, it's my favorite Batman film. Yeah. I was reading favorite. fun facts about it the other day. Do you know that they had to send out shit tons of replacement posters of Catwoman because they kept getting stolen from bus stops? Okay. Yeah, I was stealing them. <laughs> okay. No, I'm being ser- I'm being serious. I was I was at uni at the time, and we would go around uh, after a night out, and we would rip open the 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 uh, bus start and stand stops advertising things, and we'd take out all of the posters that were there. Dude, Batman, X Files, whatever it may be. I they made the news. Now. Me and my friend Chris made the news in '89 because we stole every fucking Batman poster. In San Diego, <laughs> we we wallpapered our fucking apartment with it, and the shit like all oh, the Batman posters are getting stolen. Yeah, I never realized that was like a way to get free posters. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I guess that would work. Well, they would lock them in these like. You have to give them a good. We didn't have we we stole the bus stop ones, but we just stole the ones from front of the fucking movie theater too, and uh, they just had these little locks, and all you had to do was take a fucking uh, uh, a screwdriver, flathead, and just go little uh, with your vice grips break that lock that thing opens right up you don't have to break shit by the way you don't have to break glass you just break the lock oh yeah Every long. we just ripped them they literally have a thing that has like a couple of locks we just, by we the way. just fucking rip them off a minute <laughs> i'd like to see him prove it i said it i could be full of shit 
Yeah, um, something else I read as well is they went through 60 Catwoman suits and that she could she had to be vacuum, vacuum sealed into them and that uh, she only lasted so long before she would nearly faint and they'd have to give her a break. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> like, in terms of the effort she put into Committed. that role. Well, it makes you say, like, it's like Michelle Pfeiffer, I don't, I don't think Catwoman would be anywhere near as good. With They had, like, five other options for who they're going to cast. Meryl Streep was a potential. Oh, Can you imagine? Like... I just don't think she would have done anywhere near as well in a performance. This uh, is the first thing Rags noticed, by the way, after what, one of her first... You know the scene where she gets killed by uh, Max? Rags was like, it really struck me how fucking good her acting is. Like, Well, Sean, uh, Sean Young was going to play Vicky Vale in the original Batman film. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she either broke her ankle... Or had a schedule and cut. There was something. There was something that made her have to drop out uh, at the last minute. And uh, so they, they. I think this was. They might have even gone into principal um, photography at the time. Uh, and then they, they made a quick call to, to Kim uh, Bassinger, Basinger, however you say it, uh, to Kim Bassinger, and Kim Bassinger was free, so they managed to get Kim Bassinger to to take that role. So Sean Young turns up at the the Batman Returns auditions for Catwoman dressed in a Catwoman outfit because she was going to be cast in the original but couldn't do it, and then so she 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 kind of went all out for that. Yeah, didn't get it. Didn't That's get a famous it. story. Well, yeah, because she crawled on his fucking desk and did a bunch of weird shit. Yeah, um, which I would have thought in those days was exactly what they were looking for. <laughs> um. I'm surprised That's he didn't just else. bang her while fucking doing a, a, a few bumps of fucking coke. As someone else mentioned, by the way, the do you remember when she eats the bird? In, uh, yes, in that's legit. Day? Yeah, apparently they did it with a fake one, and Michelle Pfeiffer said it looks too fake, we need to do it with a real one. Seriously, how fucking awesome is that? This is like, well, uh, and Danny Peter was eating raw fish. You know, it, that, was, that was legit fish he was eating. I mean, it looks like it. You watch the movie, it's like, that's real. <laughs> Danny DeVito was apparently Danny DeVito stayed in character yeah. the whole time, the whole time in in you know when he wasn't feeling, he was just going just this little fucking man is walking around the set, going, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Los Angeles <laughs> Wizard World. There you go, Red uh, Hulk. Red Hulk first appearance, Michael Turner cover. So this is back when the variant stuff started, like really getting ridiculous. I mean, there were some good variants, but. You know, uh, I think Michael Keaton's pay got buffed from six to eleven million. See, it used to be a mystery when they uh, premier when they introduced him. Like, who is the Red Hulk? We didn't know at first. I know you, who he is. Well, when Harrison they, Ford. When, Harrison they, Ford. They, when they revealed it, everybody was like, "What? <laughs> Where did his mustache go?" Yeah, <laughs> they're like that's fucking stupid. So, but if it fell off when he transformed, then why, when he transformed back, did it grow back? Who drew this cover? Who drew this cover? Uh, one of the greatest artists to only draw a few comic books back in the sixties. I mean, oh, it kind of looks at hey, Stranko. Oh, okay, Dick Stranko. Jim. Oh, I'm thinking of Dick Sprang for some reason. Yeah. Jim Stranko. Okay. Even says it right there. So, some of the really surprises people when you rewatch Batman Returns is some of the dialogue. Like when. Uh, Just the pussy it, I've been looking for. That one, but also. Uh, I, forget, I forget what prompts him. Like Max says something about a void. Then Penguin just looks at the other girl and goes, I like it. <laughs> fill her I fill void. Her void. Yeah. <laughs> That was one of the biggest criticisms. Was like the penguin was disgusting. I'm like, it was That's, great. He was Good meant point. to be disgusting. Yes. Well, I think people. Uh, people <laughs> it's you know, all about reaching out to people, all, touching people, groping all people. You heard before <laughs> Burton's Batman came out for two years was we are separating ourselves from the '66 camp Batman. We don't want the camp Batman. We want the mm. real Batman, the way he was yeah. intended, a pulp hero, a dark hero, a detective. That, and you know, for the most part, I mean. Burton, not a comic book reader at all, ended up doing something that um, they really haven't been able to do since, and that's making Gotham a character. 
Well, that 89 movie took uh, years to get going. Years. They, yeah. they were, they were essentially continue. trying to get that movie going since the end of the 70s. It, since Superman. Yeah. And it took, um, it took uh, uh, 10 years. Oh, uh, God. What was his name? I can't pronounce his last name. Smith. No. <laughs> You know, uh, Gary, you were saying Gotham as a character. Uh, do you know the, because like, that's another fun fact I read, was Michelle Pfeiffer, well, so the, the Gotham set took up half the Warner Brothers lot, like, yeah. in total, and the Michelle Pfeiffer got lost in it several times. Like, uh, Well, if it's Michelle Pfeiffer, then that would be the, the, the German Impressionist Gotham. The 89 Gotham um, was designed by Anton Furst. Oh right, yeah, those are good. I, I meant the uh, returns Gotham, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, your, your German industrialist pseudo fascist. Tom, I'm gonna pronounce the, I'm gonna mispronounce this. It's Mankiewicz. Mankiewicz uh wrote a first draft in eighty three for Batman. Mm. Well, I, well. Remember, I read that in Starlog magazine. So I was like, we were so excited, we're like, we're getting a Batman movie. Yeah, like, you know, and I was younger, so like six years was a long fucking time. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was 13. Well, but there was, three, there was three years between movies in those days, and I felt like an eternity. Uh, yeah. Now we're actually at a point where uh, when The Batman 2 comes out, I don't even know what box office that's looking at. Oh, I think it's a, I think it's a lame duck film. 500? I am more than convinced it's a lame duck movie now. I think like it's, they, it's uh, in trouble. Like Batman, I feel like they've killed Batman temporarily. Like he'll come back, but for well, now it feels like he's dead. Andy Muschietti, 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 Andrew Muschietti, Batman, Buschetti, Andy Buschetti, Pastrami, is, uh, Pastrami is directing Batman: Brave and the Bold. Yes. Oh, okay. and he says <laughs> that in the sequel for the Flash. He wants to do the story with Eobard Thorne killing the Flash's mum. You know, that should have been in this film. The one that should because have been when the your movie one. revolves around your mum getting killed and you don't even have the fucking killer in the film. That was one of the... Did we talk about that on FNT? The fact that the so. Flash didn't have any interest in finding out who killed his mum? I no, did. None. I said, we don't find... Like, they, they completely brush over that. Like... Don't you, How do I solve you, this? I know. I'll bring her soup so she doesn't need it. It's like, why don't you just stop the just killer? Think, if I can go back in time, <laughs> I can at least see who the killer is. Yeah, two birds with one stone. Find out who did it and stop them. You're the Flash. But you can tell they like they were like, no, we can't. We're not doing that. <laughs> like, we're doing a different story. So he's just not interested in that for some you reason. Can go back in time and stop all these other things. What about the killer? Ah, why would you do that? That's shit. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't I? She doesn't buy the potatoes. Well, what if that killer goes and kills somebody else? <laughs> the Flash, like, wait, Flash don't care. It's not Liz, his Liz kill mom. more than once. No, Jane Theory summed it up. She's also the Flash goes and fucks up everybody else's life. The end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quite literally, yes. The remember what he says, like Hail Jane the, Theory. The Batman eighty nine verse that's just doomed to die. There's nothing I'm we can do about it. He said, but that's oh, like, as I said in FNT, I do not, I do not in any capacity have this Keaton Batman as that Keaton Batman. No, no. sir, no, no, sir. No. Also, no. just to clarify, I assume since that FNT, you've uh, soured on the movie a bit of you, or well, yeah, you know, the the the, the adrenaline's quelled. Yes, I loved seeing Michael Keaton as Batman. I think this is possibly, since the warehouse scene, the best we've seen of Ben Affleck as Batman. The there action, are big, even though it's during the day, yes. I, yeah, I, even though it's yeah. during the day, which, oh, whatever. Uh, I, I, Sasha Calle was a legitimate um, surprise at how good she was as Supergirl. Uh, but... Um, it's like an it's alternate not, not universe. A good, not a good Supergirl. film, and, and the, the Barry stuff is, a, is abysmal. Which, which, so my, my, my kind of overall is, is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think I was, I think I was uh, exceptionally generous with the uh, 5 out of 10. Sasha Kale's Supergirl was a failure. Yes. Absolute yeah. failure. Yes. But I mean, I mean that I, I, was, I, I mean, th I, that's what I, I kind of liked. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did too. I liked but, that uh, they didn't girl boss her and, because and, no, that's what I was convinced they I were going to do. I thought they do. gave her a really shit death. 
both of the times they give her shit death and well and, she but, died like eight times <laughs> so yeah she, she died like super meaningless <laughs> it was meaningless death but the thing is it was always de- like that was the one decent thing in the movie is like okay you're trying to make man of steel make sense whether you like the movie or not and uh and and clark killing somebody so they they went after one of the biggest criticisms and tried uh did they succeed no no the i don't, I don't think i think man of steel justifies zod being a horrible monster in its own film i i, I have agree. different issues with it <laughs> i i agree but it, to be honest it, it does pay it kind of really gives even though cavill's been shot on this movie gives cavill like a huge huge sort of thumb up because it's basically saying without cavill superman zod takes over the world all the world i mean all the yeah so say that world. but it also just doesn't have any of our characters defeat him when they could. You know what I mean? No, and 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 he doesn't no. But I think that I mean the uh, the you know the moral of the film is <laughs> that Barry's a horrible person. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> Barry's a horrible person, but not as and, and his as, selfishness. As he has to relinquish his <laughs> selfishness for things to get fucking fixed. They don't care if that wheel dies. I know! Because he's again, a horrible person! Not as horrible as Ezra Miller. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Ezra Miller is horrible. definitely more horrible yeah, than right. Barry Allen. <laughs> uh, dude, Actually, like that, the more I think about it, the more it really fucking annoys me that the, 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 the flash, the main flash just says it's canon for this world to be destroyed. It's doomed. Goodbye, Michael Keaton, Batman. There's nothing we could do oh for you. God. And it's the and same fucking world. theme as Across the Spider Verse. It's the same. <laughs> I'm uh, thing is, Gary. I think the third Across the Beyond the Spider Verse is going to say that's wrong. It's going to like it's going to say Miguel is wrong, which I think is better than saying everyone fucking Uncle Ben has to well, die. It, it would be more Spider Man to not accept that. Absolutely, he's, that's, he's, dude. He's that's the not, big criticism that's, that's getting more and more traction over the uh, days that go by. More and more Spider fans are like. Uh, I don't know if Spider-Man would buy this ever. And the thing is, a lot of people are defending it with, yeah, but it's not true. Don't worry. Like in the third film, it'll be revealed that Miguel's either lying or tricked them or that maybe he just thought it was the case. Make Miguel the bad guy? Fuck you. That's all I got to say. That's, that's I, 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 don't, I, don't think, I, mm. I don't think they're going to make him the bad guy. I think they're going to make him mistaken. He's And he's going to have like a redemption. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to be like, oh shit, I was wrong, and that these people don't actually have to die. And Miles will be like, oh, see, I can save my dad. And then to make it tragic, still, they'll probably kill someone he cares about, like Gwen. But they got to be careful killing Gwen, though, because of the uh, Barry uh, gays order. Is she gay? I can't remember. No. <laughs> no, no she's, 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 a, she's female and she's straight by the looks of it. Uh, but uh, the writers can't help but force in their ideology which fuels the nut jobs online that everybody has to be as fucking damaged as they are. Well, um... And that was me putting it nicely. I don't know if they're going to be willing to kill her, so I wonder about that. I don't think she's going to die. I don't in, think... In which case, gonna it's probably going to be that Miles... I think she's going to end up in Miles' is universe. It, isn't it supposed to come out March of next year? Yeah. Which means they've probably done a shit ton of work on it already, then. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I was told. I'll, I'll repeat again. I was told at the the Dallas Fan Expo by a person in the know that this they, they started out as two films, two separate films across. The, so they were going to do a Spider Gwen film on its own mm-hmm. and a Miles film on its own, and uh, because of COVID, they just combined them. But they they started out separate. Don't think it helped uh, because that Gwen beginning is fucking long it is too long we yeah i was i was even surprised by how long that went yeah i did like i said i did joke to my mate i was like this this gwen stacy movie is good still doing where's, good though. where's where's miles Morales? Is he doesn't turn making, up for 20 minutes still making money i mean it's it's i mean like out of the june movies it's clearly the fucking best like without a doubt as well, I, 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 I am i am seen the first one the first Spider Verse yeah, film. I've never seen the first one. So, so that no. So the that that opening actually, I I I, I enjoyed. I did enjoy the Gwen Stacy opening. Wait, sorry, Gary. Did you uh, say I it's didn't. the best of the two? Well, uh, the first one's the best of the two. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. First one's the best. easily. I still, oh, I've okay. still got to see that. I will see that. Yeah. You got to see Prestige, my dude. I know. I watch that with you. 
Mm-hmm. What you haven't seen Prestige? Hey Mola. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hey Mola. What? Wait, I, what if I seen Prestige? Huh? What the hell have you been doing? Sorry. You haven't seen Prestige? Hmm. What? Hey. Who? Oh, Prestige. 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 Yeah, you haven't seen Prestige? No, I haven't seen Prestige. Because everyone ruined it for me. By time, by time, I had an interest in seeing it. Everyone had told me what fucking happens. Listen, if it. someone tells you Vader is Luke's father, it doesn't stop you from watching Empire, okay? Yeah. Wait, Vader's Luke's father? No, Luke is Vader's father. I Luke's think... Vader's father. Oh, that makes I think the only sense. movie that really applies to is uh, The Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense does lose yeah. a lot of its. If you job. know the ending, you're like. Hmm. <laughs> Even to the point where I don't want to say what it is now, just in case there are people. In I've never them. watched The Sixth Sense because I know the that thing. one makes sense. Like that makes sense because it's kind of fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. How could you? Unbreakable. Is Do you know what isn't boring? Movie. So I like absolutely. You know is great. The Extraction Two. That ain't boring. Unbreakable is one of the best superhero movies. I love Unbreakable. Yep. Love it. Shyamalan, it what the hell happened, man? Phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> film. Un- yep. One of the most underrated movies. Underrated. Massively underrated. What's I that? never want to see another movie after that that's done by M. Night Shyamalan. No, I, I just stopped. I do because they're funny. <laughs> he makes funny movies. <laughs> Have you seen The Happening? That movie's fucking brilliant for memes. Mark Wahlberg's acting in that film is phenomenally funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. No, we would never. I saw the bit where the guy, the guy goes into the tiger cage. <laughs> yeah, and they it take just, off and his it just looks suit. like a comedy film. Yeah, they take off his ragdoll arms. <laughs> <laughs> His arms just like fall off him. <laughs> is this meant to be a comedy? No, I don't know. The happening is quite funny. Okay, we have got five minutes left of the poll, people. Were you, were you going to ask me something when Prestige got brought up? What was it? Oh, yeah. Hey, should we should we lasso Critical Drink and should you, you me, and Critical Drink go watch the Marvels together? What does that have to do with prestige? <laughs> Why have we done this? I just, remembered. The I just remembered. I just remembered. I just remembered. We're all watching the Marvels anyway, aren't we? Yeah, but we what could do, do it mean? together. Well, like in person. Yeah, or go to some pick a location. Go to location. <laughs> have some gay sex by the sounds of Gary's music. <laughs> Listen, Gary has dreams, all right? <laughs> I, mean, he's, he's I had a dream! I am so proud of you, all three of you. <laughs> Pride comes before a fall, Gary. Uh, Did you see they wanted to... What? To, to, hmm? to jail Lawrence Fox, is it? Is it Lawrence Fox? Why? Because hmm? he, he burnt a bunch of Pride flags. Because he banged Rose Tyler? I thought you were allowed to burn Rose flags. Tyler? Well, that's what I thought, you see. That's why I'm confused. I was like, well, if you want to jail him for, for burning the fry, uh, pride flags, then pride what about fight for the fried flags? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love fried flags. Dude, that sounds, like a, that sounds like a gross British food. Fried <laughs> <Yes. flags. laughs> Blood pudding in fried I mean, flags. Some, fried flags. Some, some spotted dick and some fried flags. Uh, Lawrence... <laughs> Fox should be allowed to burn whatever flag he likes. Well, I mean, if everyone else could get away with burning yeah. flags, then so, wait, 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 is that a hate crime to burn a pride flag? But well, no. that's what that's what people are trying to say. Not it's a hate union crime, Jack. But if you burn a Union Jack, it was technically a Union flag. It's Union, union Jack flag, if it flies at sea, but whatever. Yeah. Every, everyone gets it yeah. anyway. If I draw if you, if, face on a flag and burn it, does that mean I hate fun? Yes. But if you if you burn at your country's flag, I mean, I don't think that means you love your country too much. No, it doesn't. But you, you, just you should be allowed to burn any flag you like, just to be consistent. You should be able to burn a, you buy a flag. flag you, you, flag you burn a flag, then your flag, flag your Japanese flag, you can burn whatever flag you want. And I why, why, why do you hate Japanese people, Gary? I don't hate Japanese people. Well, you you want you want to burn, burn their flag. flag? You said you just want to burn their flag. Wow. Well, 
Outrageous. <laughs> Pearl Harbor, never forget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not far away from, say, the Hill Paba with all the fuck ups we've had today. <laughs> Um, did, did the I am, Gary, Memers, I un, at least I understand. Did the Legion of Memers make the Pride ISIS flag for me from Friday night? No, I, I heard the Pride, didn't. the people who do Pride made it. Oh, they, well, I saw the Pride Empire flag at the fucking convention. I took a picture. Re of. Regent Street looks like it's been taken over by an occupied force. Oh, I know where that is. I know where Regent Street oh, is. There you go. I've been there. It's very difficult to miss, right? <laughs> well, it probably is. It's very colorful. Hey, let's do some supers. We haven't done a single solitary super. We've been going for nearly two hours. Let's do it. Let's go. Uh, you answered this, Gary, but Liam Khan uh, with a 550 Canadian says, Gary, if you've read it, what do you think of J. Michael Strinsky's Rising Stars comic? If not, oh, please ignore. You saw my comment in there when I, I did see it? You, I did see your comment okay. answering his question. Well, quickly, I will say... I liked it a lot. I enjoyed it. And then the TV show Heroes ripped it off mm. almost completely. Damn. Uh, Kung Fu Hot Dog with a five pound says, Hey, Gary, there's a video out there claiming you're a Freemason. <laughs> As you are not a puff, can we expect a video of you getting BLM bald? Hailed Real BBC. Well, in all fairness, Kung Fu Hot Dog, a devil worshipping. Freemason who beats his wife and likes cheese pizza, and and fried plagues. I beat my <laughs> fried oh, plagues. Oh, that's right, because they put the black and uh, the the picture of Melissa with you black misses eye. with it. Yeah, so that had to be you beating her up. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we had a little disagreement. But it's way, she had one black eye, so it's nothing. Gary had to tell her twice. She said she preferred Empire, and that was enough. That was Crazy. enough. That was enough. It's nothing I had. To, yeah, it's uh, yeah. She, she listens now. She listens much better now after that. No, um, the black eye is from because uh, my wife was a legit punk rocker girl and would fucking mosh, and mm. somebody moshed into her face. Well, she got a boot to the face. At, I believe it was a either minor threat or vandal show. That's a legit. She went in there and she got she fucking destroyed in the mosh, and she got destroyed. That's what happens when you go in the mosh. But the girls understood that back then, so they knew what they were getting into. They knew what they were getting into, and there she was fine with it. Joshua Levesque with the five dollars says, "Hail, baby face man, bearded man, and long man." Hello. How's the 2012 Avengers versus the X-Men comic run? Also, thank you guys for such amusing episodes and mooch love. Uh, much love it, you, George. Which X-Men run? Uh, Avengers versus the X-Men. Avengers versus the X-Men. 2012. Um, I didn't like. I didn't like. Tragic. Art was really good. Concept was interesting. But uh, once again... Uh, Captain America, a little out of character. What do you oh, do? Was, he, was he a Nazi? <laughs> Is that that much out of character? What did he do? No, Hydra. He, he's. It would be too long to explain here, but basically, the poll. Every, every, okay. Remember, he he was against the superhero registration act, but he wants to like kidnap a girl now. <laughs> like what? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Hope Summers. Okay, right. here's Hope, the Hope Hope Summers, guys. We got basically the girls are key to everything is could destroy the fucking world. Blah 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 blah. And uh, the Avengers go to take her, and Cyclops goes fuck no. Cyclops. Cyclops. Sorry. Cyclops. Cyclops. Uh, here's the results of the poll. In fourth place, Civil War. Dun, dun, dun. Seventeen percent of the vote. It tried. I love Civil War. I love all those, the four. Uh, my favorite is not even in the top four. <laughs> my favorite is <laughs> Winter Soldier. Anyway, uh, Infinity War comes in third ba, 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 ba. with 21% of the vote. Mm. Second with 27% of the vote. Avengers. Da, da, and da, the da. winner of the best Marvel movie. 
according to our current audience, and we've had 7,300 of you at peak today. You fucking amazing people. Iron Man, Iron War, Man, Iron War Man, with 33% of the vote. Iron Man. Nobody lost that. Isn't that Nobody funny lost though? That. But like, was voted the best one? It's the fucking earliest one. The first <laughs> one. Well, I mean, it's the one. It, it's such a simple formula. We mm -hmm. gave a, an actor who looked like Tony Stark, who actually fleshed him out uh, in a way that enhanced it from the comic book. You had a costume design that looked exactly like the fucking Iron Man costume design in the comic book. One of the last. Uh, creations by the late great sam winston uh mm. you had uh yeah. creators who were involved plus they had a limited budget they knew they couldn't fuck this up everything was riding on it marvel would lose would lose not just lose distribution rights rights to their characters they put up the rights to their characters uh and they pulled it off they pulled it off it was just a superhero movie uh and it's and, and it like, le dude, he fucking kills bad guys. And and like Iron Man's not a like, I'm not a not not kill guy. <laughs> Never been. Um, and it it was always a hero with great potential from the comic books. Right? Oh yeah. Yo. Iron Man was always, and I don't I don't think it was ever fully real. I, like hardcore comic book fans read Iron Man. I read Iron Man. I, he was always one of my favorite. But it, he just never rose above like B level status. And for once, a movie did it. A move, a, a superhero movie, not only raised a superhero to household name status, it it translated into sales into in a comic shop. It directly related. They came around to comic shops and they uh, the the promoters for Iron Man and said, "Hey, um, why don't you come up with a promotion for the movie and we'll we'll give you a trailer. Uh, you can play. We'll give you some posters. We're going to give you passes." And I came up with uh, the drunk Iron Man contest. So everybody had to like dress. I had a, a, a dresser brought out with a mirror um, to do demon in a bottle to recreate the mm. demon in the bottle cover. So men, women came in with their suits on and they're painted on Tony Stark ties and a bottle of whiskey or whatever. And they'd like do, do, strike a pose. And we put all the pictures on our website. It was freaking great. It was great. And they loved it, by the way. The, the Paramount freaking loved it. They, uh, they complimented on us, gave us a little shout out. Uh, back in the day but that was like that was when it was young and fun and and there was symmetry going on and uh then it all went to shit because that's what happens with anything that gets super corporate i don't think you could have got better casting i just don't think no, it, was it was possible to cast somebody ballsy to cast him without insurance uh, he, he was a at that time he was a bit of a hollywood prior you know John Favreau went to bat for him. Mm -hmm. Kevin, Kevin Feige, to his credit, took him on. You know, uh, he had done Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which was mm -hmm. a, a great movie, by the way. Yeah. Um, Shane Black at his best. Yep. At his very best. Yes. Uh, and uh, th like, so he had proven himself enough to get that role. And it was, and it was a great comeback. And it was in a, and a mixed in all that is a great comeback. Don't story. call it a comeback, baby. This actor who had been to prison. Remember, Robert Downey Jr. went to prison, not county jail. Like, and if he fucked up that? again, he was going to prison for a long for, time forever, because of the three strikes law, mm -hmm. which I was under the same thing. Um, but it's a great story. It's like he got clean and sober, cleaned up his life. Uh, became a better man, was an inspiration for others, others in addiction and stuff. So the, sure. so the story outside of that was just as interesting as the Iron Man movies. Is, per, is well, life it, in a bottle. It all plays in, doesn't it? Because it kind of reflects Tony's life. Mm -hmm. like he goes yeah. Completely I think he could draw a lot from that. Yeah, if, you know. Particularly in Iron Man 2, where he's a raving oh, yeah. drunk in Iron Man 2. Mm -hmm. And nobody's going to believe me, but... If my friend Jay Trussell is the only one who witnessed this. Well, no, Doug Johnson did too. And I know they both listen. So we used to sit in movie theaters back in the 90s. And while, you know, because we have to wait, wait in line. We didn't get our pick seats. So we'd, we'd just fucking, we'd talk like this. It'd be a podcast. This is how, this is how I honed my skills. It was talking to my friends Jay and Doug. And we'd just break out movies and we'd speculate stuff. And we'd cast movies. And one of the people I cast as Iron Man back in 96 or 7 was Robert Downey Jr. Wow. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, and uh, I remember when that happened. Jay texts me. He's all, "Dude, you called it." And I'm like, "It was easy." He's he's an alcoholic, <laughs> and I was basing it off a of chaplain, you know. So sure, and I'm like, sure. kind of looks yeah. like Tony Stark. Yeah, He'd probably yeah. work. He'd probably work. And they did it. So it's pure Jeez. luck. They did it's it. luck. And it's made one of the most influential superhero <laughs> movies of all time. Iron Man, along with stuff like Spider Man One or X Men, or but uh, more Blade. More importantly than that, it just won the real BBC poll of best Marvel movie. It did. Did RDJ really thank Mel? The chat saying RDJ thank Mel Gibson for getting uh, through the hard times in his life. Wow. He would know. Mel Gibson fought off. Mel Gibson just called me sugar tits. He did? Mm -hmm. You are. I mean, I, I took that as a compliment. I would. Yeah. I would. Would. He's the only person who hasn't been in an MCU film, by the way, is Mel Gibson. <laughs> it's like the last actor who hasn't been in. I don't film. think he's going to be in him. No. I think. Mm, he I think he would have been fucking Thunderbolt Ross if they had let him. He would have been a good Thunderbolt Ross. I think so. It should have been Sam Elliott, dude. Because he was Sam in, Elliott. Mm -hmm. He was already it's Thunderbolt okay. Ross in the Ang Lee one. As much as you're correct, maybe he should stay away. Maybe it's oh, Sam Elliott. <laughs> Ang Lee tried to make a comic movie. I don't hate Ang Lee's Hulk. I no, I don't hate it. And and the the, the I, visual I like some of his, are, I like his decisions. Do, um, the, decisions. the visual effects are better than the 2007 Hulk. They're Dude, do, they're uh, better than the fucking She Hulk. <laughs> they are. Well, obviously, are. we should do a poll of like most. Un what is the most underrated superhero movie? And see. Who wins? Angley's Hulk would probably be in there. Uh, we've already discussed the most underrated superhero movie. What's wait, that? Wait, which one? Oh, Bruce Unbreakable. Willis. Unbreakable. 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 Right. Dread. Oh, God, I fuck Dread. I love Humble it so movie. much. I yeah, fuck I'm Dread. I love it. I think, I think I Dread is, is freaking... That film is amazing. Wood wants to. Wood. You would. W O U L D. There's some fucking L's and U's for you there, Gary. Wood. As would be Dred's Law anytime. Well, I'd, I'd rather be Anderson's partner, if you're not. But just me. to clarify, you're talking about that movie where Stallone plays Judge Dredd, right? <laughs> I like that movie too. <laughs> but no, I'm talking I don't. about Carl. I Irvin's don't Dredd. like that movie. Which is uh, I think up there with the Crow as one of the best adaptations of a comic ever. Crow was great. City. Yep, love the Crow. Sin City, probably the best adaptation of a comic of all time. If you're talking word for word, panel for panel, making it look like the comic, can't argue. Sin City, the first one. Ah, oh, Sin City, yeah. Uh, but City. we could, I mean, I mean, one day we will do the rest of the uh, Doctor Who top five. Yep. I'll tell you my controversial number one, which the classic, the classic fans are going to just, they're going to get mad at me for. Uh, let's go through some more supers though. Marty Gray with a five pound says, Hey, as and Mauler, could you Hello. two extol the amazing entertainer to Bruce Forsyth to Gary? As always, nice to see you, to see you nice. Fucking hated the man. <laughs> Fucking Ooh. hated him. He was, Ooh. he was a, Fake ass fucking bitch, Bruce Forsyth. Who? He was a horrible fucking person behind the scenes, man. Who were we talking about? Bruce Forsyth. He wasn't a pedo or anything. He was just one of these like presenters on TV. People loved okay. him, but behind the scenes, he was he was horrible to people. Just horrible to people. Well, that's super chat. I got what they wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's Marty. So, so basically, you might as well go back to the dad jokes, mate. So wait. It, Hmm. Right. Show, think what right. Think, think Mr. Rogers, right? Think Mr. Rogers, yeah. but behind the scenes, Mr. Rogers was just a massive twat to people. And oh, not he was he's sort of like that. He was a he was just just an awful like an awful person, apparently, to people. Just awful. You know, I'm sure his all his colleagues would talk highly of him, I'm sure that. But he used to talk Terry Wogan, that is a legend right there. Terry Wogan, I will say nothing but amazing things because Terry Wogan. In front of the camera, behind the camera, that man was fucking absolute sweetheart, apparently. 
love me some Terry Wogan. But Bruce Bruce Forsyth, nah, he's, he was he was all show and 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 uh, uh. so no, issues. Marty, no. Do you want to talk up Bruce, uh, Bruce Forsyth, Molly? No, I'm all right. What show did he talk present? He used to have the Generation Game, Strictly Come Dancing. He used to be one of these quiz show, you know, so like quiz show type of presenters. Mm -hmm. uh, used to do dancing. Used to do a lot of dancing and stuff. Uh, Des O'Connor was a lovely man. He was a lovely man, Des O'Connor. Uh, I prefer Alan Partridge to Wogan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still better than. I would still take. Yeah, I would still take Bruce Forsyth over uh, James Corden all day, every day. Or Jimmy Savile. <laughs> or Jimmy. Definitely over Jimmy Savile. <laughs> well, I don't know. I might take Jimmy Savile over James Corden. I just don't know how you guys watched Jimmy Savile for so long. Didn't like that no, guy. Dude, looks a little dude, creepy. I knew when I was a kid. <laughs> like I'm not. Like, my I'm fucking sure child senses were going off when I was a kid. Gary, I if you, I and I used to love like um, who was the guy that just died? Noel, um, the the artist, um, that just uh, that just died. Fucking eat massive pedo guy. Uh, Rolf, Rolf Harris. Oh, Rolf, Rolf, Harris. Rolf Harris, who just died. Are you, as a kid, you used to be like, oh, God, that guy's lovely. He's lovely. Lovely, lovely. Dirty fucking pedo. You never know. You'd never fucking know until it was all fucking revealed. Jimmy Savile, holy shit. When I was a kid, I was just like, that guy's a fuck. He's a. Fuck so, have you either of you seen the um, Jimmy Savile documentary on Netflix? Uh, no, I saw the uh, Savile, you mean? I, th I think it's, it's called, just that. called Savile, isn't it? I saw the the Louis Theroux uh, weird weekend with Jimmy Savile, which was really fucking interesting to watch. I actually, I well, think I have watched that Savile documentary. Well, I highly recommend it. It's fucking phenomenally researched and edited. Um, mm. But what's interesting about it is they show a lot of clips from you know ten years prior to everything coming out, and it's pretty obvious several people know, like from a lot of different interactions and uh, BBC covered it up, mate. No, I'm not talking about BBC. I'm talking about like uh, random like co-stars oh. or, or presenters or stuff like that. They'll, they'll like he'll be making it pretty obvious, and he'll make loads of jokes about doing it, and they're all like, <laughs> uh, "Okay, you know, like I don't know if is that funny? Is that, that, that's kind of kind of weird." As for Scythe Barrymore, well, I mean, Drew no. Barrymore, no, no, no. <laughs> Point was, Savile had Ma a shit ton Michael of... Barrymore, Gary. Michael Barrymore. So, <laughs> if uh, if yeah. Bruce Forsyth was next to Drew Barrymore when she was twelve, and her mum used to take her to Hollywood parties so Hollywood execs could fuck her, then uh, then I think uh, Forsyth would have been in on that. But uh, I I don't know, Michael Barrymore. I'm going to say no to both. I watched a Jimmy Savile documentary on YouTube about yes. four or five mm -hmm. years ago, and it fucking enraged me. I could not like. Yeah, no, he's he's quite possibly one of the worst human beings to ever exist. Yes, yeah. Um, and it's fucked up. The like, Torture. I don't know if you guys, I know this from the documentary, but basically, hey. he had he had told people in a sense that he he was because he's uh, he was Catholic, right? Yeah. So he he was like, "Have I done enough? Do you think to counterbalance any of the?" The worst stuff. And it's just like, huh? And apparently when he was dead, his body was found with his fingers crossed. So, like, he was basically like, for all the charity work that I do, for all the good influence I have, for all the children I inspire, hopefully that counterbalances the other But he stuff. did the charity to gain access to kids. This is the thing. Yeah. He's full of shit, obviously. But, like, he's actually hoping that when he meets God, God would be like, well, okay, yeah, but you, you never did a bit of bad, but you did a bit of good, too. He never suffered any consequences, right? He died. No, he, he got no. away with it. Like, was got it two away with years? It. Away two with years it. after everything came out. Yeah, when he was dead, it all came out. I mean, all came out to the public when well, yeah, he was when um, he was dead. The yeah, like been proper, his body's been exhumed you. and moved. Yeah. So uh, when he died, there was like you know grand celebrations and people talking about how amazing he was, all that stuff. Proper funeral, huge uh, placement on like whatever graveyard he's in. But once all this stuff came out, they, they had to move it all because people were defacing and destroying every last fucking remnant of his existence on this planet, which is only fair. Uh, yeah. When you find he wasn't, this is the thing, he wasn't buried flat. 
His is coffin it, was put at an angle yeah, looking yeah. out over the ocean. So, yeah, for those who don't know um, and are wondering in chat, because I have no idea who this guy is, he's, uh, he's much worse than the worst. Mm. Uh, like I said, watch that documentary. It goes through and, you know, obviously not in graphic detail or imagery tells you what he did and how he did it. One of the worst fucking humans ever. And honestly, probably one of the biggest shames Britain has. Yes. Him, Gary Glitter. Yeah. Ralph Harris is obviously Australian. Stuart, um, Stuart Hall. And the countless that we don't know. The countless we don't know that are working this very same. Yeah, in or have passed on and we never, we never will know. Or we'll never know, yeah. I don't want to... Somebody, a couple of people have mentioned a certain name in the chat. I don't want to go into that. <laughs> don't want to go into that. And this is, by the way, it's funny because you were saying, like, how did none of you know? I, I actually never watched anything to do with him when I was growing up. I never saw anything to do with his shows. I or used anything. to watch Jim Will Fix It. I never saw any of it. So I never really knew much about him. That documentary, though, helped me fill in a hell of a lot of blanks. Have you, have you seen the, the Louis Theroux? No, I haven't. I think it's back up on it. The last time I knew it was back up on Netflix. Oh, I'll give it a watch. Or if it's not there, do check out Amazon Prime. But I oh, think Zoom. the weird okay. weekend with Jimmy Civil, Jimmy Savile's now been put up, put back up, and there's there is some moments. Well, let's just put it this way: if there's an afterlife, he's absolutely burning. Fuck yeah, 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 yeah. Or he's dealing, or or he could be dishing it out. I, I, you know I, what I mean? I think even Satan would be disgusted by him. <laughs> Yeah, one of the most vile people to ever exist. Um, I'm glad that took the time with the Doctor Who top five. <laughs> people are going to fucking hate us when they're like, they're like, where the fuck is our top five? Where's the top five? Hey, we're saving it for a rainy day. We're saving it for a rainy day. There's so much shit going on, folks. We're saving it for a rainy day, a special day. A special day, just you and and that, well, us, us. rainy day. Yeah, rainy here's day. Because the next stream, we're going to do a tournament of the best superhero movie of all time. Yes. It's going to be 10 million <laughs> polls all going. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, we'll X-ray going to be doing all of it. I got my top five right cool, here. Though, would it be cool to see the best compete of the superheroes, though? Like to throw in like Logan against Avengers against Dread. Does Dread count? Is he a superhero? Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. I mean, that I'm classic. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. We'll count it. <laughs> Anti you know, and the, even throw like Watchmen in, see what see what people vote for. You know, oh, oh that's movie? a superhero film. Yeah. The movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I'm assuming it will be movies. Movie. Yeah, okay. The, I'd love the movie. Spider Man Two, Fight Against Dread and Logan. What happens? What do you do as oh. uh, Logan? Well, is I mean, Lo I Logan. Watched. I only ever watched once. Once, yes. I, I walked out of it going, okay. I mean, that was a good movie. Never gonna really watch it again. Pressing <laughs> fucking yeah, yeah, after, yeah, yeah. After, um, but I'm never gonna watch this again. After Days of Future Past was such a nice little ending for the X Men. And uh, that's kick that's, ass, kick ass. That's a good film. Kick ass is damn like good. King, well, Kingsman. That's not a superhero. It's a comic book. Though. I uh, love Kingsman. The first movie. The first, first one of, movie is yeah, I really one like Kingsman. My favorites. One of my all time. It's such a good comic book too. Secret Service. If you and who wrote it. that? Mark Millar, who wrote Kick Ass. Mark Millar. Who wrote The Ultimates? Mark Millar. Uh, he wrote Ultimate X Men. He co-wrote Ultimate Fantastic Four. Did a bunch of did a bunch of great stuff. Yeah, I and mean, Lo Logan Marvel. was kind of it was kind of like my superhero version of um, Requiem for a Dream. What is great film? Never want to watch it again. Logan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree with that. Um, he did Wanted, which was a terrible movie, but uh, well, I guess not terrible in the standards of if you compare it to anything that comes out today. But uh, a great comic book. And by the way, mm -hmm. it's coming back. Wanted. Big game. Wanted is coming back in the comic books in Big oh. Game. Yeah. Well, isn't, I mean, uh, you know, last week I showed off Nemesis Reloaded. Uh, I've also been purchasing the Ambassadors, both Mark Millar. And he's going to bring kick at Jennifer Connelly. Is she, look, she's but she's had him cut off now. So I mean, whatever. Um, 
he's bringing in isn't he bringing in a huge crossover with all of them including yes. kick-ass as well yes 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 they're 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 converging all the worlds are converging i can't i've got to go back and buy a bunch of back issues but uh i was buying malar world stuff pretty regularly and then like you know COVID kind of dipped out of it but uh that was like the last shit i was like regularly buying and reading from mainstream still is Jennifer Connelly had a breast reduction, guys. Just gonna have to get over it. She's still hot. I don't care. No, she's still hot as fuck. Fucking great in Top Gun Maverick. You would. Yeah. How old is Jennifer Connelly? Chat, you would smash that. 40. Oh, freaking hard. She's gotta be 50 at least, six, right? 47, maybe? No. She's older than I am. Is she? She's 52. Is she? She's a little bit younger than Gary. She's looking fantastic. <laughs> She's 52. Oh, she looks, yeah. She's totally she like one, phenomenal. She's one year younger than me. Um, so does uh Summer Hayek. Looks incredible. Summer you Hayek. know what? It's funny. I ended up watching the faculty, by the way. I was telling you guys I was gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. I think Selma Hayek's in that movie. Yeah, she is. She's the nurse. She has such a small role. I was like, what the fuck? But it's kind of neat. She's in it. That film has a crazy amount of stars in it. Completely forgot, I guess, because they were less famous at that point, which makes sense. But um, it's funny, you know, Elijah Wood being the protagonist, right? But he's like the last in the billing when the film ends. Not last in the sense of like and and with or whatever, just like I think that he was pretty low on the scale of fame at that point. I quite liked uh, Faculty, by the way, rewatching it. I thought it was pretty good. Movie. It's a good movie. I was actually surprised. I thought it was going to be a lot worse, but um, it's got a pretty okay script. I'd probably call it good. And uh, it's, it's it very much it pays respect to like a lot of the movies it's inspired by, which is kind of cool. Even the thing, hmm. you know, a lot of love for the eighties. It's a great time to grow up. Grow up. Yeah, but the nineties were fun. The nineties were like a decade of fun. There was a lot of fun. This going chaos on. and experiment yeah. is the nineties, and that's yeah. th that movie fucking is the nineties. <laughs> Holy shit! My Did biggest issue with it. <laughs> my biggest issue with it is the uh, soundtrack. It's filled with like college rock. And shit, <laughs> like, which is the worst thing ever. But the nineties were, yeah, that's the birth of the uh, alternative became the mainstream. Yeah, well, um, I recommend it anyway for those college, who college rock to... was such a good. That, that's that's what it was called before alternative. It's kind of cool because as time goes on, like it's like a uh, immersive fantasy to go back and watch movies made in the nineties to remember being in the nineties. Kinda, it's it, you know that's not at all mm. what they were intended for, but they do function that way now. Oh, way. I had long hair. I had hair. You had hair, and I had long hair <laughs> down to my ass. Wow! I think in all fairness, I had hair, hair all the way through the two thousands as well. Two thousand and noughts, I should say. And noughts. The noughts. And then, and then it got. Then I decided to shave it off in 2011. So as it says the Buffy fan about college rock, Buffy also sucks because of the amount of college rock in it as well. I don't mind the college rock from Buffy. See, then there, there's the Buffy. Yeah, Blink. American Buffy. Pie. Buffy. What a Buffy. movie. Okay, Buffy. American uh, Pie was a great. Fucking... American Pie was awesome. Seven it was. was great. Uh, I'm a. I like David Fincher. He's a damn Hell good yeah. He's he's made plenty of great movies. Yeah. Ah. Zodiac was, uh, you know, completely underrated. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., by the way. Yeah. The girl, the girl with the dragon yeah. tattoo, the great, the Daniel Craig one, is, is highly underrated. That is a fucking epic movie. I like the girl who was in the original. She was. Uh, yeah, uh, Numi Rape Face. Yeah. Yeah. What did you call her? Uh, Numi Rape Face. Oh. Remember, she was in Prometheus. Mola. Yeah. I also remember that she was film in doesn't exist. Well, you know what's funny? I was about to say David Fincher could be unfairly said to be like the Undertaker of Alien, yeah, but it, really, it's him, Joss Whedon, and and, Joss Whedon. and Ridley Scott, and Ridley Scott. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they all killed Alien together. Yes, they did. Uh, yeah, I, I, I saw. I've watched the whole trilogy of the um, the Swedish girl with the dragon tattoo. Girl who played with fire, girl who kicked the hornet's nest. Um, Why is this girl doing all this shit? Because she, she wants to. What idiot kicking the hornet's nest. I know. Angel, Angel is it's better just... than Buffy, says Michael Connor. Yes. No. I'll say you, yeah. Mahler. The best season of the Buffy versus Angel season five, and it's not even close. I agree. But what's a better season. series? Which is a bit. 
Should we take it to a poll? So the problem is Angel. <laughs> the problem is Angel Season Four oh! exists. There's not, not like Angel Season poll. Four is like the worst season of all of them because it yep. fucking destroys Cordelia, which was rude. Um, and the plot gets really bad in season four. Uh, oh, it's tough to choose which, like, because part of what makes Angel season five so good is the prior eleven seasons. It, like, you know, a lot of his stuff is being paid off. They really do go for for. I mean, they're not being a ton of crossover. They really do go together. Uh, Buffy's yeah. better. Buffy's Buffy's better. It's better with Angel in it. Um, and yeah. But Angel's like damn good. It's a cool I don't want to pick between my children, okay? The th- I, problem I is will. I will but... because some kids will piss me off someday. Okay, here's a I'll question. Like Who do you prefer, kids Buffy kids or Angel as characters? Oh, Angel. Yeah, Angel. and it's an easy choice, isn't it? Mm. It's a, a more She's a protagonist in one of these series while she is the protagonist in the other one. I'm just saying, it makes a difference. As a recovering addict, uh, having like the demons uh, like basically asleep uh, the you know, in you True. the whole time. Oh like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's very identifiable. So, I mean, the the opening shot of Angels a series is him at a bar, and he's getting drunk. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that's on purpose. Yep. Ah, oh, we got to rewatch it, dude. I just oh, got it's to, an easy rewatch for me. I got to get through fucking. <laughs> I got June. a friend who said he's rewatching it soon. And I was like, you better fucking invite me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> without me, I'll kill you. I can't, I'm not allowed to rewatch it without Mrs. Neurotic. So if we ever do a rewatch, she'd have to be there. David Boroughs is a great. He is a good actor, and uh, I mean, he had massive success going from Angel into Bones, didn't he? Bones, Bones, yeah, was Bones ran longer into, than. Yeah, eight seasons was Bones. Ran longer than he as Angel did. So, and then he yeah. didn't went go into some sort of like Navy Seal show after yeah, that, which was also yeah. massive, massively yep. popular. Yep. Never quite made it into a list, but he's always been good. I always wanted to do really fucking dirty things to Eliza D- 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 Fish. Fishku? Yeah. Eliza Dushku. Yeah. Dushku, Dushku. Well, she was see, fake her, fucking smoking hot. Yes. Yeah. Her best parts are in Angel, not Buffy. Yep. Five so by five. I haven't actually answered on the bullet poll yet. <laughs> I'm looking at it like. <laughs> mm. What's the best single season of The Whedon? world oh well, i'm gonna pick angel season five firefly mm. i'm probably gonna have to pick angel season five dude it's angel and spike scenes they're all golden and they give you like two hours worth of just those two talking to each other firefly is close second. also I angel has firefly. angel has smile time it do- hey ah. <laughs> smile time oh it's so good i need to get one of them probably from yeah Eagle. They did do some wacky stuff and it it pretty much always paid off. I can't re- I can't recall well, that was ben something zany that they Edlin. did that didn't pay off. Bed Edlin wrote Smile Time, and when he writes the occasional uh Whedon thing, he's one of the best. Who's Ben Edland? The tick, the creator of the tick. One of the a great TV writer, completely underused. But when he comes in, he he writes some really good shit. Supernatural, mm-hmm. you're right. Simply Aunt Austin did some supernatural. First stuff. five seasons of Supernatural is fucking amazing, fucking brilliant great. stuff. Yeah, but Ben Edlund's the great, fantastic. I like Mola to watch the first five seasons. Of I've as you're gonna hate me. I have seen I've seen more Supernatural than you probably have. I've seen every single Supernatural episode. You saw. Yeah. You you carried on past. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you've seen more than me then. I went I carried, to season. I carried on to the bitter end, dude. I, I went up to season seven or eight. I remember. I I remember. I watched up to when Spike and Cordelia are in it for an episode. They played like wiz- a wizard and a warlock or some shit. Yeah. And I remember absolutely losing my shit that those two were more powerful than the Levi- Leviathans that were said to be more powerful yeah, and scary yeah, than God. And I was, I was like, out after this shit. Dude, this show had God in it. <laughs> yes, it did. Um. So, for the record, <laughs> I absolutely loved. Certain parts of Supernatural. Jeffrey Dean Morgan was brilliant in it. Jeffrey and it's Dean like, Morgan. It is a crime that he was given like what four episodes in total? Or something ridiculous. He did come back in season 14 for one 14. episode, I think. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus. Um but yeah, I got very tired very quick of the formula in Supernatural. And I found that they were looping the drama between oh, the th- boys. There was, look, there was a 
it was a five season arc show. That's what it was meant to be, and there was a, even, there was a, a legit story for five seasons. You can tell the, the huge drop between five to six. Jensen Ackles. Thing, but I thought the brothers were too good. I, Jensen Ackles and, and brilliant uh, Jared Padalecki were so good. They to yeah. me they carried they carried through all the terrible seasons, and even I Misha agree. Collins coming in. I really like Misha Collins as well. Still, I, dude, still you know highly casting, watchable for me. Your casting I loved was. Uh, Fucking hate that I've forgotten the actor's name, but um, you know the one of the guy, the guy on the smart gun and aliens, not Vasquez. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, oh plays, yeah, yeah. He didn't drink he plays, him on his stream. He, pl I think so. Yes, I should yeah. know his name. I'm annoyed that I don't. But he played uh, Alistair. Like he's one of Alistair's like uh, incarnations, and he, I fucking loved him as as Alistair. And he got like two episodes or something. I was like, God damn it! There was a hunter. The, like every this was a meme for me. I was watching it with a friend who adored it, and um, I was just like, "Why the fuck do they keep introducing all these badass hunters and then they die in the same fucking episode?" Like the hunter who despises vampires and then becomes one becomes like, a that's, vampire. That's brilliant. And he, he was, dies. Oh, but he was. Oh, he's such a good actor. He is a brilliant actor. He was um, such a good actor as well, man. Fuck. It's driving me nuts. Like all my favorite shit in that show gets like split seconds and then it just dies. Meanwhile, someone like take Spike, for example, right? He's meant to be in it for a couple of episodes, but people love him so much. They keep him around longer, yes. longer, longer, longer. He literally becomes the hero of Buffy. <laughs> he yeah, saves Joss the whole Whedon world. Joss Whedon hates that. No, Joss Whedon, Whedon that. wanted, That's another... him. He wanted, he wanted him dead. That's another myth, because like obviously Josh Whedon allowed it to be that Spike was the hero of Buffy. He obviously liked him. He didn't. He didn't I think like he liked him. James Masters, but I think I think the uh, the reaction to Spike caused him issues with what he wanted to do. The, yeah, no, and and it's totally fair, dude. If you wrote a story where allegorically speaking, Spike is supposed to represent like the worst of humanity, ego driven, always selfish, and then the whole audience love him the most, you feel like a pretty fucking failure of a writer, right? So they actually had to move everything around to get back on track. They literally, like, all of season five and six is turning Spike from a horrible vampire monster into a hero. Well, yeah. They get all the way happens, back around. Well, into like, a like, human. Archie more into Bunker, human. Archie Bunker came out as, like, in all of the family, the sitcom that neither of you probably watched, was like a fucking racist bigot too that oh, everybody no. fucking loved. Everybody loved human. Archie. Oh, the... It, it, Man about the house, not man about the house. Um, all in the family. All in the family. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, and and they just embrace that. Look with the boys in the Homelander now. Like Homelander, it's the Homelander show. It's yeah. the Homeland. That's not what the comic was ever meant to be. He's an antithesis in the comic, but it's about the fucking boys. It's about the butcher. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, that it's uh, it, it's it's just become the Homelander show now. Well, right, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the poll. I'm gonna stop the poll. I feel like they loop him with Homelander too. They don't know what to do with him. No, they don't. They don't. Well, for one, I mean, he's it. We are so far off what the comics were. It's not even close. It's not even close anymore. Okay, sixty thirty nine to Buffy. It's a, it's a it's a neutered version of the boys. The boys I don't with balls. But you know why people are gravitating more towards Homelander now? Why? Because the politics of the show has skewed so much to another direction yeah. that people are actually looking for the fucking anti antithesis of, of what's being also, spewed at them. I was gonna like I've heard some people say like, oh, season three was a lot less like uh, political commentary than season two. I watched season three. I was fucking baffled that people had come away with that conclusion. Do you know? Do you know what it ends as? Uh, I I know how he ends with a killing a protester that yeah, hit his he, son or something. And, he, and then He's everyone's at like a recording. rally, and there's like a, a liberal or whatever, and he just fucking kills them, and then everyone cheers and is happy and fine with it. And there are people out there who think that's great political commentary. I was fucking embarrassed watching it. I was like, oof. <laughs> Kripke can't. By the way, Kripke, who did Supernatural, yeah, the good Supernatural stuff. So Eric Kripke, uh, who created those five wonderful seasons of Supernatural to start with, this guy can't stop talking. About how his show is 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 uh, a political analogy and how skewed it is anti-Trump and anti-Republican and anti all this. He can't fucking shut his big fat fucking mouth. No, he can't. And and he talked, and, he talked me out of watching well, season three. The thing there again, like, so did season two. To be honest, like Kripke fall prey to is um, being in love with their own bias. I mean, that's it. They just Kripke thinks that one party in this country are the good guys and one party are the bad guys 
which is, I mean, such a childish, uh, like fucking retarded way to look at the world. Uh, and, and it absolutely has destroyed whatever creative, uh, the, the, the boys is a commentary on a lot of things, but it's mostly yeah. a commentary on, uh, the book, the comic book, what I got out of it anyway, uh, was it was a co commentary on corporatism and, and basically superheroes, but the superheroes were stand in for celebrities. Yeah. That, you that's what really gather that from it. Yeah, and and you could have gone a uh, many different ways, and the and the show would be more successful if it was balanced. If you call like, uh, it, th there's just so much focus on fucking Trump, uh, who hasn't been president for a couple of years now, and now we have uh, basically a dead man running our country, and you don't have any commentary on that at all. None, no satire on that at all. No, because it doesn't suit his confirmation bias. They made fun of President Ford falling once. But Chevy Chase made it an entire thing on Saturday Night Live. But they also made fun of Jimmy Carter when he came in. Dan Aykroyd did a Jimmy Carter impression. Uh, Biden falls off shit all the fucking time, and they just pretend it doesn't happen. The adults are back in the White House now. and Decency's back. Are you fucking kidding me? There is enough stuff, if you're a creative person, to pine off of just today's reality and politics and, and make a balanced show. You can make fun of the other side, too. I think one of the biggest problems most normal people have is the inconsistency. Is Well, it's clearly favoritism. And we as Americans just don't like that shit. We just don't. And we inherently don't like favoritism. It's it's ingrained in us. And maybe it's the same way in the U.K. and the rest of the world. Not sure. Uh, but here, we, we we like the underdogs. We, hmm. we, we naturally go to the underdogs. Yeah. And uh, right now, it's 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 Hollywood who's always picking on one side all the fucking time, and and it's, and it's the same with the Christians too. There's other religions they will not fuck with at all, but they feel really free to fuck with Christians. And I think a lot of us would just say, "Well, fuck with everybody then." Yeah, fuck with everybody. Oh yeah, dude, that's fuck. dude, that's that's what South Park's been doing forever yeah. and still does it. That's why they like. <laughs> I love how much they piss people off. It's always so great. Yep. Uh, I am but, talking but about South Park. Movies. South Park will, will rip about... anything. They'll rip anything. They don't care yeah. where you fall. You know what, what, what is establishment, anti-establishment. They'll just they'll tear through the whole fucking lot, which is exactly how it should be. Exactly how it should be. And it, your show would be more respected, and it would be more successful. So we, mm. have, I'm talk. We're talking about TV shows, not movies, but. Uh... Let's go through uh, some some more supers because we've do barely done, done a single thing. But my God, it's been some good conversation. Absolutely. Oh, yes. No, these things are good. <laughs> Eddie Brock with his six euro says, it's craven time. Give me the drop of lion blood and give it to me raw. Looks like it's going to be rated R as craven bites a guy's nose off. See it as. Eddie, I don't know how many times I have to tell you. I am so grateful for your super chats. But I don't know if you're aware, but I have this little uh, YouTube channel called Hill vs. Babyface where I talk about pop culture stuff all the time. Scenic. What? <laughs> you do? Yeah. Eddie likes to super chat me news that I already know <laughs> over and over again. Oh, which I'm very just, grateful for the to talk about it. And I will say that when I stumbled across that fucking trailer, I was like, wait, what already? And then I played it and I was half convinced, half convinced they'd taken footage from other movies and made a parody trailer. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this looks kind of like, like, is Russell Crowe in a movie about lions at some point? And Mahler, yes. <laughs> Mahler, I this is Russell like, Crowe with <laughs> Strand Axel. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody shot me the Craven trailer. I didn't bother looking at it because I thought it was fan made. I, I, but I didn't look at it. I just like, there's no way it could, could be out now. They, they didn't I, make this movie. I was like, what? I haven't heard anything about this shit. Like, <laughs> what? With we'll Harry get, we'll get hit if we play it because it's Sony. It's not. Oh, yeah. Don't um, worry about it. Like, like, you know, if people are curious what we're talking about, you can go watch it. It's just, it just looks, I don't know, it just looks shit. Like, it looks it does, like, it it looked like a fake film. Dude. It looked like a fake, terrible fake I think film. The, the, the Flash Reynolds, has done it. Like, 
it's convinced everybody at this point. It's like, oh fuck, there's no way a Craven fucking movie is gonna make it in the box office. Uh, right the now. kid is he is uh, weak. One. 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 He's like straight up American. Like, yo, dude, Craven. He's fucking <laughs> Russian. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was using his British I'm accent in it. Craven, and I don't like my dad, you know? And and basically, Russell Crowe is supposed to be the comic book craven. And I'm going to, like, write all the wrongs of my dad, you know? Because... Yeah, my God. By the way, totally huge fucking shame. Hollywood. Because the last time I saw that actor who's playing Craven, um, it was in Bullet Train. He was awesome in it. Aaron Taylor Johnson. And he was yeah. good in Bullet Train. I thought yeah. he was very good in Bullet Train. So it's like, oh. I've seen Bullet Train. That's okay, as I forgive you. You can you can be forgiven for like Bullet Train's. It's it's a decent movie. It's a, it's yeah. fun. It's fun. Hail Eric July in the chat. Just saw you. On Eric July, what's up, brother? Hail. Yeah, I don't... Just bought some Yara. I'm doing it since I'm wearing it since I bought so many. I'm wearing a Ripperverse T-shirt every day that I'm on stream for the campaign. Because while the campaign's active, and maybe Eric can come on next week for a little bit. Oh yeah, I think. Yeah. Maybe you can talk about Doctor. Top five. Uh, yeah, Eric, I want you to work on your top five uh, Doctor Who episodes. Can you help? <laughs> They're going to eat us alive as the weeks go on. You know that, right? We yes. might. What we should do is probably that, like, towards the end of the show, let Eric go and conquer the world, and then we can finish our top five. What do you say? At this point, it's going to be a fucking Christmas gift, isn't it? Yes. It <laughs> well, I mean, as his birthday present, it's going to be a Christmas gift. So, see how. Wait, no, no, Gary, my Christmas gift. <laughs> Is going to be a Christmas oh, gift, sorry. just not on the same fucking year. <laughs> I'm going to totally fix that. I have to go in my attic today because a lot of it's like I have to figure out where I put this shit in my attic. But it's now um, it's now like 107. So I got there's certain things I need to pull out of my attic, including like some of my wife's old pictures that I shouldn't have put in there in some film that would probably fucking melt. Because it's it is oh. hot, dude. It is effing hot. But yeah, I'll, I'll get that done soon. I'm sorry. You're gonna have like, some, some people in chat saying, "Gary, hey. we're still waiting on Picard season one review." So, oh yeah, Who, what's gonna come out first? That'll be TFA part five. Who knows? We could talk about how Picard season one and two got 4K releases, but Picard season three did not because of okay. seriously, Ooh. they gave it. They how gave it. Decision it made? All budget. They didn't shoot it in 4K. <laughs> oh. oh, but Strange New Worlds, uh, which shit. I watched. 15 minutes of the first episode of season two and it is fucking awful it is star trek discovery also awful it is fucking terrible i don't know what you're talking about i've never heard that show mm. um or uplinks has been a bad for six months kratosis has been a sorcerer for eight months has watched flashpoint paradox last night and enjoyed it any recommend any neat recommendations for other animated superhero movies uh street fighter 2 uh, uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of DC animated movies up till I don't know. As, as somebody Mask who's read the, the comics, these, and people go, yeah, actually, yes, because at least Mask of the Phantasm is an original, whereas these animated movies are taking from the comics, and the comics are fucking way better. They're always better, but the, I like a lot of the animated. The early stuff is really good. Oh, yeah, uh, as... Sub Zero, uh, Mask of the Phantasm, Sub Zero, Return of the Joker. Watch those. I think Dark Knight Returns is actually well. The first part is better than the second part. First part's pretty good. Don't watch the Killing Joke. Uh, I've watched the Killing Joke. It fuck that. Uh, but um, All Star Superman, pretty good. Pretty good. Don't watch. Anyway, uh, Deck Nine Seven One has been a bad for sixteen months. Thank you. Stone Cold's beer cooler with a four-month sorcerer says Flash just made me want Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Lauren Cohen as Batman and Joker and Keaton in a Batman Beyond movie with Steve from Stranger Things as Terry McGinnis. Sure. Uh, I definitely wanted, I definitely would have preferred Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Thomas Wayne. Um, you didn't even need to have the Joker in it. No, I mean, that, that's dude. actually a side story in the paradox thing, but you know. Keaton in um, a Batman Beyond is such a no fucking brainer. I, I, <laughs> it's such a no brainer, and they can't do it. And it's, it's like free money, it's free like, money. Everyone would love it. Dude, a cyberpunk Batman. 
You know, like, and Marvel and Sony might beat them to it, but Sony might be figuring out that, oh, this Miguel O'Hara character is kind of popular. Oh, hello? You know, uh, we could make a cyberpunk Spider-Man. That would be pretty cool. Like I said, man, they're killing Batman. Absolutely killing him. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they are, Molly. Um, Grand Laz has become a member at the Sorcerer level. Thank you. And Pete with a $20. Thank you, Pete. Uh, Faria Samra with a $50. This afternoon, gents. First off, I just want to thank y'all for providing uh, throughout my boring weeks, entertainment throughout my boring weeks. Second, have any of y'all read the comic Super God by Warren Ellis? It's a short run, maybe four or five books, but I found it to be incredibly deep. Yeah, there were some women that were sucking on uh, Warren Ellis's penis and thought that they were able to suck out some talent <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to suck out any talent, and therefore Warren Ellis got cancelled for sleeping consensually with fucking women who thought they could suck a dick and get talent out of it. Sorry, anything you'd like to add to that, Gary? Uh, Warren Jizz is not talent elixir, apparently. No. But you can have consensual sex with a man, and then when he doesn't give you the job of chief editor in charge of fucking DC. Uh, you just want to, you know, me to him. I had consensual sex with this man and I didn't get what I wanted afterwards. Comic groupies fucked a comic creator and didn't get anything from it and got mad. That's why they canceled him. But they knew exactly what they were doing. They were, they were comic groupies. They knew they were comic groupies. They weren't attracted to Warren Ellis. They didn't really like. They liked him for his talent and his access. And that's what they were. They were going to use what they were going to use to try to get it. And when it didn't work, they got mad. Everybody uh, knew what the fuck was going on, though. War knew yeah. what was going on. The girls knew what was going on. The publishers, everybody who was part of that fucking check, uh, they were in a forum together. One of the chicks used to work for me for like two days till I found out she was a fucking crazy bitch and uh yeah they all knew what they were doing uh nathan cassidy with a ten dollar says since you had graham and chuck on i decided to check out nightfall really enjoyed it are there any other batman comics you'd recommend to a non-comic guy thank you in advance dude <laughs> the metric ton uh if you've watched if you've gone through nightfall and you want to go forward I would read the Contagion storyline, uh, which you can get in trade paperback for pretty cheap, probably. I'd read the Legacy storyline, which actually brings Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan back together. Uh, I would go through Batman Hush. Always recommend me some Batman Hush. Um, if you want to go forward, if you want to go back, there's some great one-shots or, or miniseries. You can go through The Dark Knight Returns. Um, you know, not a fan, killing joke, not a, not a Graham and Chuck thing, but Killing Joke, I would always recommend Killing Joke. You could go uh, with Grant Morrison's uh, Arkham Asylum as well. You go with Year One, uh, Ten Nights of the Beast, isn't it? Uh, Death in the Family, Lonely Place of Dying. Uh, there's a shit ton. No Man's Land, of course. Yellow Flash. The whole of the No Man's Land saga, which starts off with Cataclysm and then moves into No Man's Land. Um which is a huge story arc and, and good. Long Halloween's another phenomenal one. There's one or two. There's one or two. One or two. One or two. Yeah. I sent Morley Nightfall. I do have it. It's very in, safe. Not, right. in, not in trade paperback. It got him the individual episode. I got it packaged. Not a single dot of dust will touch them. <laughs> Uh, Le Chevalier de Lise has been a witcher for 36 months, is just in time. Noich. Happy. Uh, hi, hi to you three. Any chance of a Babylon 5 review overall or per episode or a la prisoner review, please? I think there's way too many episodes to do a, a, a an episode by episode. Way too many episodes. Yeah, um, to yeah and, I, and I would have to probably go right back to, to episode one to rewatch it all from scratch. But I was enjoying it when I was watching it. I went through three and a half seasons of it. And I was enjoying it a lot. Uh, Pete with the $5 says, uh, In nom patrice et fili et spiritus sancti, amen, for Britain. Um, that was probably for Regent Street. Uh, Travis's world has been a saucer for months. As, uh, first off, uh, hail the fellowship. 
And that's where that ends. So I guess there wasn't a second. <laughs> and second off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Faulty pillars for the two euros as Brits can forever be proud of ending slavery first. Uh, yes, Britons died uh, on the high seas uh, trying to prevent slave ships leaving uh, Africa and going to uh, America. But, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, hey, dude, with the five dollars, is what happened to the Monday stream with Gary and Gollum? He was away. He was away at a convention. Uh, I was not getting shot at Asheville. <laughs> we left Mon Sunday and we couldn't get home quick enough. It was just, uh, I, real quick. Yeah. Try to be quick about this. Left Texas, went through Arkansas, Tennessee, made it to North Carolina, hung out for a couple days, left, went through Georgia, Alabama, Missis, uh, Mississippi, um, Louisiana, and then back to Texas. Did, did the whole southern loop, but did the north uh, northern part of the southern United States and then the very, very southern part of the United States. I was there, seven states. In like four days, it was nuts. It was fun though, fun show. I'm, I'm, I hit the fucking wall though. As like halfway through Saturday at the show, I just like started getting a little dizzy, and I'm like, oh shit, I've been. Traveling I told you when you were in the car, yeah. we had a we had a chat. Yeah, we had a little chit chat when yeah, you were we in. The... I was in Alabama. When we were talking Alabama. Yeah. Uh, Monkey D got with the two pounds says, "As can you play Yakuza Zero? Um, uh, maybe at some point, yeah." It looks like a game that I'd be interested in playing. So maybe, maybe. Uh... Shit, I can't say anything. I'm under NDA now. Um, Canon uh, Foldral with a $2 says, Hi, Azabel. Hi, Garethia. And hi, <laughs> Mall Arena. Wow. <laughs> Tim Webber with a $5 says, I've started watching Doctor Who. Thanks to y'all. Matt Smith is a good actor. But his eyes don't emote. Dude, dude, I've never seen such a young actor play such an old man. It's incredible. Uh, Tenant is better. Uh, Dr. Love, what y'all, Dr. Love, what y'all do? Hail. Not wrong with having a preferred doctor, but look, you know, Matt Smith is, he's a fucking great actor. Travis's World with the $20 says, I've been on a journey to build my comic collection and I decided. I had to rebuy the first comics I remember buying as a kid. Batman Aliens by Ron Mars. Uh, that was good. Uh, that was before Ron Mars was a, an absolute fucking bell end. Uh, an absolute fucking window licking toss pot dickhead. Uh, but yeah, uh, get that Ron Mars stuff while while he was uh, a normal human being. And Bernie Wrightson. <sighs> Bernie Wrightson fucking. Uh, pick up his swamp things, you know. <sighs> I know it's silly spin-off, but I don't care. Uh, no, it's, it's, it was fun. It was fun. Superman, Alien, Batman, Alien, Batman, Predator. You know, it was all, it was all fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, go fund yourself 69 with a two euro. Thoughts on the Craven trailer, you miscreants. Uh, I couldn't stop laughing. It's Craven time. Oh, you want to hear the just, Flash? Just, just down, oh, gone. The Flash is four day total. Oh, actually, before you say that then, Gary, do you know that the predicted weekend for The Flash was too high? Yeah. The, the, the domestic high. was 55.1 million, and that actually went up to 55.8 million, so it went, or 7 million. So it went up by about 600,000. However, the international, which was only 75 million, went down by 2 million to 73 million. So the predicted ended up being too high and the predicted was way lower than the predicted. <laughs> so the initial predictions were 70 to 80 million dollars. Yeah. For the 3 day weekend, not the 4 day uh, we have a ridiculous holiday here, another ridiculous culture. A bank holiday that uh, nobody else took off. Um, and uh, it comes the day after Father's Day. Uh, sixty-one point two million for four days. The supposed holiday weekend. 
61.2. So it got nothing on Monday, dude. It got which uh so six, six million? Uh, Eric Weber on Twitter. I hope he's not mad because I called him Kevin Smith, but um, because I like Eric, he's a good dude. Uh the flash comes with Ian. And even lower for four day debut with just 61.2 million, which is essentially identical to Transformers three day debut debut and to give you some, to give you some idea how brutally brutal this bow is. It is also the same 35 million versus the little mermaids three day total debut. It is also some 35 million uh, versus, I guess, less than little mermaids, which did so the Transformers so just... 61 million was a three day weekend. Three day weekend. Yeah. So he's Not saying four. It, yeah, it, that's what he points out. He's all <laughs> it, it it's terrible. Oh, don't feel bad for Michael Keaton. He A doesn't care and two got paid a bucket load. He he's paid. okay. He's okay. He'll be fine. He'll you can, he, he'll clearly come back if they want him, or he'll just be like, whatever, I'm moving on. Yeah. He he's okay. Trust me, he's all right. Uh, Butter Biscuit 92 with a $20 says soon, just like Gary's Picard review, the Phantom review that remains coming soon. The Smeegs with a 13 month witcher says, hello, fellow Masons. Boy, that video was a trip. I laughed. Warner Brothers got what they deserved in the flash. Also, Isom fans, we're so close to the short box, so I'm a show. Isom on the BBC. Love the lads. Hail chat and hail real BBC. The Isom campaign at Ripperverse.com. Ripper with an A, not an ER, you race. On the campaign is there. Go now. Get your books. I got my books. I got my slab. I got my books. I got my t-shirts. I got my books. I got my slab. Also, go check out Ryan's, Jeremy's, Odin's, and Comics Division's plush plushies that up on makeship.com go get their plushies discounts if you get two five percent off get three ten percent off get all four fifteen percent off so go buy some item and read it hugging a plushie uh solemn uh solomon kane 66 with a seven month sorcerer says hail lads i want to thank Mauler for making as play golem for our enjoyment which was which will be even greater when Gary plays it. Keep up the great work. Oh, it will be good. Share this real quick. It's super quick. Uh, so <laughs> Millar World reading order. This mm. is it. It's, this is it. So it's he just tweeted it a little while ago. Reborn is fucking awesome, dude. Uh, the Chrononauts is pretty oh, reborn. good. Reborn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got, yeah, I got reborn is good. shit loads of covers for that. Good. Uh, yeah, th these are all like really good books uh, to varying degrees, but these I freaking yeah this is some good shit this is i've still got the like, um i've got the uh todd mcfarlane reborn cover as well uh i do too okay there you go you know what i also have i have some todd mcfarlane hulks thing on. Uh, that reborn by the way that reborn is drawn by uh greg capullo yes it is. so go pick that shit up that is some good shit good good shit hang on yeah you know mcfarlane before he was uh, on Spidey, uh, did some Hulk. Did some really fucking good Hulk, by the mm. way. Uh, good shit. Good shit. I got my whole McFarlane Hulk run. Uh, okay. Super chats. Go get them. Okay. Uh, James Bush, uh, Busher with a two pound says, What do you each think of Extraction 2 if you've seen it? I saw it. I thought it was great. Great fun movie. Uh, really good characters in it. Uh, I think somebody uh, said it the best. They said it's like 80s action with, with current day special effects. Yeah, you can tell it's volume some of the time, but whatever, it doesn't really take away. Uh, because it's just, it's just good fun. And uh, it's so funny because something like Extraction shows how you can do a, a, a strong female character and have a real, you know, and have a feel uh, as if she isn't a Mary Sue um because the, the the woman when she tries she tries to take guys down in not going toe to toe but she tries to take them down by doing all sorts of um creative things it's it's really good and there is there is some uh there's some great stuff in there some really great stuff 
I haven't I seen it yet. I, I don't think it's quite on the. It's, I wouldn't say it's on the par of John Wick, but it ain't far. It, you know, it's kind of it's there or thereabouts. It's not too, you know. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, me too. I think I'm the only one who's seen it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm done. I'll have time eventually. Uh, uh, Goga with a 20 Swedish says, hashtag make Gary lock balls. Oh, he'll lock balls. Don't <laughs> worry. We'll make him lock balls. What? Sure, she you. One day. I'm locking my balls up. No, you'll get. I don't even know if Gary will get to lock balls. <laughs> no, he won't. He won't get to lock balls. About. Faulty pillars with a five euros says, Americans would get the first roundabout. And not be able to get out of it. Uh, Americans have roundabouts. Buddy. Do you? Yeah, all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Primark one one seven with a ten dollars is hail the real BBC. Just found out this weekend. I'm going to be a father adjacent, aka an uncle. So I wanted to share some love with you, alt right adjacents. <laughs> Keep up the great work. Congratulations and thank you. Uh, Therio, God of Rage with the $5 says, hell the Avengers Quicksilver scenes are better than the Flash. Correct. Correct. Uh, yeah. The Jade Monastery with the $5 says, when you said what's a crisis, I peed a little. Nobody cares. They just want quality fun movies. They, they don't. Bushin Rayu Cat with the $5 says, as Gary, your thoughts on the Craven trailer? Also, uh, Robert Patterson surprised me as a young Batman. Should he do TV show slash movie since he's in shape? Um, no. My ball <laughs> will remain free. And uh, we've spoken about Craven. Because I'm free. Rashid Mali, uh, Malik, uh, or Malki, Rashid Malki. Oh, sorry, butchering your name, dude. With a 10 SARS. And their first super chat on the channel. So thank you very much indeed. Says, have you seen the new Grand Tour? I loved it. Uh, no, we are trying to watch it together as a unit. Uh, of yeah, one century. I tried to get it going yesterday. I failed miserably. Um, I was, Mola I was, tried to get it going Friday. And failed miserably. We should have watched it before this show. That's what we should have done. Oh, should we have? Yeah. I'm just going to, you know, as a parent, I have the right to show people all the time. Okay. I'm, as a parent, I'm also acknowledging my hypocrisy. <laughs> so do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I'll be able to watch it tomorrow. And what about Gollum? Uh, tomorrow is off for me. I'm NDA'd out my mind, but tomorrow is out the window. NDA, what do you mean NDA'd? What the fuck is that? Non-disclosure agreement did out my mind. Oh, why? You can't tell me what you're doing it's a non-disclosure agreement so no well fuck you we're not friends he signed, he signed my non-disclosure agreement we're we're making a big old video about how much you suck gary <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> and i'm oh. trying to fit this in with going to possibly going to the cinema with my mates tomorrow to see flash because they haven't seen it and they want to see it dude i gotta take my kid to it I'm <laughs> I don't have to ever watch it again. <laughs> but my, one of my mates is like, I can't make it. I don't know if I can make it tomorrow morning because I'm waiting for a delivery to come. And I'm just like, well, if you can't go first thing, I can't fucking go later because I got shit. Did you say, who's the star here? I'm the star. Who's the YouTuber? Oh. I'm the YouTuber. <laughs> no, Gary, because I'm a normal human being. Oh, you didn't, you didn't say... Don't you know who I am? No. <laughs> oh, um, wait, there's, no the there's no Hassan Pikering going on here or other egotistical wank lords. <laughs> do you know who I am? No. No, I don't. Uh... Oh, you know who I fucking am, mate? No. Um, Ryan Guy with a $5 says, love you guys, no homo. There's always a bit of homo there. Yeah, uh, hashtag lockballs. Clint nope. Beastwood. Clint Beastwood. That's such a great name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, is, that is the greatest fucking name I've heard in a long time. Clint Beastwood. Fuck yeah. I want, I want to see the the movies he's made. Uh, with the $5 says, uh, pretty sure Clooney and Patterson are the only two who didn't kill. 
even Kilmer threw all those coins at Two Face. Yeah, made him fall off the ledge. Yeah. yeah, we did talk about this on another real BBC. It's true. Yes. Uh, uh, no, no, he killed the Batman franchise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many times has the Batman franchise been murdered? He even apologized for it. Wait, Robin, Robin, and Batgirl kill Bane in that. They don't kill him. They undo the venom. Oh, I thought they they scissored him around the neck and threw him off the edge as well. I... No, they just knock out the tubes and he falls. Oh, down. they just but knock out the tubes. Fair, and it, uh, I'm pretty sure the building falls apart, so he probably did die. <laughs> <laughs> Clueless was Batgirl. Yes, Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> Alicia. Silverstone. Alicia. I would have still smashed her into tomorrow. Oh yeah, she's. She was hot. She, you know what she got famous from is fucking aerosmith videos yes 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 you're absolutely right yes suit me up right. uncle alfred suit me uh this is a virtual this is a simulation i remember that shit as well oh it is batman and robin my favorite batman movie so ah! I hey down there you. i have got my chris o'donnell and my val kilmer and sonar suit one in six batman and they look great god i want val kilmer in the proper one yeah, yeah, that would be nice. If there is a one in three statue you can buy of that. There is? Yeah. Mm. But unfortunately, it does mean bat nipples. Yeah. What do you mean? Unfor like, that's that's great. That's that's what you want. <laughs> yeah. It's the big fuck up the, with the, Joe Joe Schumacher. Joe Schumacher said that. Where Joe were the bat nipples on Batgirl? Sex is yeah. Exactly. Well, there were sort of. There were actually a little bit. There were actually a little bit. Where was, uh, where was, where was the little mound on Batgirl. I would have <laughs> loved to have gone into Alicia Bat Silverstone's Bat mound fucking hell. I am, baby! Maybe she's Anywho, to Brazil. we're at the three hour mark. I'm going to have to cherry pick some supers and we know that no Zaku boy's got to be one of them. Uh, oh. let's, let's just grab a few. Ian Soforth gifted five memberships to the stream. Massive thank you, Ian. I got don't worry, order. folks. No, All the super point. chats which didn't get read out today. I will be doing afternoon tea with Az this Sunday. Sunday Last Sunday, week, Sunday. we di I did an EFAP that would have made more. I EFAPed six seconds of footage in an hour. Was it? Uh, oh. what it was, was Melanie Max, Melanie Max. Uh, catching the, yeah, an hour. Chrissy DM me saying, I'm in bed with my husband, should be having sex, but we're both watching this and laughing our heads off. Congratulations. So I guess I caught block. How did you right? get an hour out of it? Oh, what did you say, <laughs> dude, I think it's the finest thing I've ever done on the internet. Should I make Chrissy wear a wedding dress for Friday Night Tights? Like the whole show? There's something else. Oh, yeah, there's something else. But that bouquet do... throw, that bucket, bucket throw, that bucket throw couldn't be rushed more. Are you going to EFAP Chrissy's and filing cabinet sex? Is that what? <laughs> what? Hey, Chrissy, send me a sex tape. I'll EFAP it. Yeah, that's going to go down well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she'll appreciate that. Uh, Ian, thank you for those five gifted memberships. Um, the Icelandic uh, Filipino with a 7,500 isks says, uh, after years of thinking about it, <laughs> hey, I have to say that the Captain America is the best trilogy. I was on the Iron Man train for a long time, but the second Iron Man sucked donkey balls. If you watch it now, you'll probably love it. Trust me, compared to all this I, shit that we're seeing. I think it's better than Iron Man 3. It is. Uh, it's a funny thing. I watched it again. I, I watched the Iron Man trilogy not too long ago. And both the second and third movies, which I wasn't a great fan of at the time, uh, are comparative to the shit that we've had out. Fun films. That doesn't mean shit. <laughs> it's, it's, it means what it means, Morley. It means what it means, whatever that means. It means I'd rather watch those than anything that, apart from No Way Home, which came after uh, Phase yeah, yeah, 3. Yeah. Uh, I don't count the ensemble in this, otherwise that would be the cake. Yeah, I, th I think the Captain America trilogy is the best trilogy. True. Mm -hmm. Um... Let's grab, let's grab about the game with the two Canadian 20 because it's their first super chat on the channel. So thank you very much indeed. If you guys want something good, watch Arcane, folks. Yeah. Well, I've got three days left of Netflix before it goes because I cancelled Netflix. Fuck 
Netflix. Three uh, so I'll have to watch game. from there. Hmm? Three days to watch our game. Yeah, in a nutshell. Uh, Carabid with a $5 pounds, which is their first super chat on the channel as well. So thank you very much. The best film is clearly The War of Star, Gollum. <laughs> Hashtag lockballs, I guess. Mm. Uh, Sean Atkins with a $50 says, what is everyone's favorite scene in Extraction 2? Well, because I'm the only one who's seen it, I can't really disclose. I like the I'll... one where Chris Hemsworth does action and wins. I will say that everything <laughs> that happens in Dubai is freaking pretty awesome. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and be as broad stroke as I can, but the whole Dubai thing was was great. Was there a car chase scene with women driving? Look, dude, it's a realistic film. <laughs> Unless there was, pl- well, there were plenty of crashes. So, yeah, maybe. It, was he freeing the slaves? Who there was actually a woman that drove a car in this. I laughed. Sexism. Um, 427 Art Bock with a $50 as well. It says, partner to a question. I think that's a, an also correct gone wrong. Partner to a question, or part of maybe, to a question I asked Drinker a bit ago, as in Gary, what comics would you say writers of all mediums and genres could go to read and learn from? Or, if you want to be more specific, I'm an aspiring fantasy novelist and looking for recommendations. Uh, are you yeah, going to go right. on this? You want me to go on uh, Well, if you're talking comic books... Uh, I would highly recommend uh, people like Chuck Dixon, Alan Grant, um, early Scott Snyder stuff, for sure. Early Scott Snyder stuff. Um, Grant Morrison. Mark Millar. Uh, Mark Millar is always a good one. Alan um, Moore. If you're a fantasy writer, Frank. One comic book series, and it's actually a magazine series, Savage Sword of Conan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would also say uh Denny O'Neill, 70s Denny O'Neill stuff, um, which is great stuff. Frank Miller, obviously. Uh, I think I just mentioned Frank Miller. Oh, Rick Comics. Um Yeah, I think that's some some pretty good recommendations in there. Anything you like to add? Jeff, I say Jeff Johns, Jeff Loeb, Jeff Johns, Jeff Loeb as well. Yep. I think Jeff both Loeb, of them are great. Fantastic comic book writer. Yeah, really fantastic comic book writer. Didn't do so well on the TV side of things for Marvel, but did produce the Daredevil series, which is the greatest thing they've ever done. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. What's be- <laughs> Let's do another poll real quick. I know we're trying to end. What's better than Daredevil from the MCU? I'm going to say nothing. Nothing. There you go. That's the end of that poll. Um, Nothing is better than Daredevil season one on Netflix. Period. Um, Disco Stew with the $20 says, is Josh Weddon's real name Joe Mammers? (laughs) Sure. For $20, you can can call him what you want. Uh, No Zaku Boy with the $50 says, who sees into the hearts of men and the undergarments of women? Peeping Tom. Can Tom unmask an identity-stealing delusional doppelganger when the public eye views him as public enemy number one? Will Tom swoon with rapture when facing <laughs> the pretender? Uh, no, this is the works. greatest Rose Gallery of all time. I got... um. I got your email, or not email, regular mail. He sent it regular mail, registered mail. Just wanted to let him know that I got it with the with uh, Peeping Tom's little plot. Oh, little, little super chats. So we, uh, we have- Alchemical Kingsman with their first ever super chat on the channel. I did actually show this off. Two pounds says, if it's Michael Barrymore, can you swim as? Uh, the one thing that I don't want to be around Michael Barrymore is in his swimming pool and gay. Because uh, that was that is a recipe for disaster, apparently. Metal Slave with a $50 says, <laughs> Lock Balls, Gareth. Lock no. Balls. You'll know. 
uh frankie sullivan final super chat for today and we'll get all the others in the uh super chat square upon uh afternoon tea with us on sunday again first timer frankie sullivan is it just giving frankie all the frankie sullivan super chats the first time in that okay with a five pound says can we get a round table of everyone's favorite warhammer faction death guard there you go uh, i'm the only one who plays uh warhammer here so uh, the flames yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sure. Uh, so thank you, absolutely, everybody. I'm just seeing if I can catch anything else. Lock balls. Lock balls, oh. lock balls. Yeah, Duke Devil 95 gifting 10 memberships to the stream. And that's fiddy, that's fiddy currency. So Duke Devil. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, thank you so much indeed for those 10 gifted memberships. I uh, really, really appreciate you. Again, folks, sorry if I didn't get to your super chat in this. Obviously, we're trying to keep conversation flowing. I think we're... I'm just going to... I'm a little bit biased, I know. Fuck, I think that. I thought there was some fucking good, good conversation today. I thought there was some damn good conversation. I had fun. I thought so too. I had a lot of fun. So, so apologies if I didn't get to your super chat. However, that doesn't mean... You're going to go without this Sunday, 2.30 p.m. UK time. I do a show called Afternoon Tea with Az. I will go through all of the Super Chats that weren't read out. I will give you your day and the time that you deserve uh, to answer any questions that are in there. Hopefully, if they're not directed at me, I can just pass by real quick. Okay. Okay. I, I, do, I do i do try and answer them i do try and answer them even if they're directed at you or Mola. if i know the answer i'll answer you know i just make something up if you don't that's <laughs> what i do yes lies Mola. Yeah. is there anything you'd like to plug before we go sir not really sir just the normal things open bars coming up on thursday and then of course Actually, I think it'll be a meme fat that comes out this Saturday because little Raggleton is on holidays, oh. um, which is unfortunate because his holiday ends like on the day we're doing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, so he will not be able to join us for that one. Wait, is... But hope that's not this week, is it? Uh, next week. But I next know week. somebody who might. Yeah, be yeah. Oh. You do. I do. Is are this... you on uh, the real BBC then? Are we? Uh, sorry, are you on an e fat? But we're, uh... What? Are you on FNT <laughs> a week on Friday, then? Am I? I don't know. If, if we're doing Gary Indiana is, Jones. Well, it's, I, I mean, I, I imagine you guys have thousands of people you can bring on for an Indiana Jones one. It's up to you guys. Because I do run a different show with you guys semi-regularly. It's you do? <laughs> That's pretty good. What? What's that, that show? We'll be called F F F Fat. Fnit. F fap. It's just called FAP. <laughs> it's well, in any case, it, uh, where you you masturbate online. If there's anything you wanted to watch, that Gollum compilation came out. I, I, know, I meant to tell you about that. As um, it got finalized, like uh, uh, Wolf wanted to edit some more things into it, such as Lock Balls is in it now. It wasn't in the original. Um, so that's on the Moolah channel. It's basically <laughs> just a compilation of me as and metal and Jay Longbone suffering. So that'll probably be the thing I'd pull. Those are the best in. ones, to be honest with you. I like to watch you suffer. Yay. Um, we want to watch um, you suffer when you get to that point. Mm. Mm. I'm going to be suffering because Secret Invasion comes out. I'll be oh, watching it God. too. It doesn't end, guys. We all and know then that. Witcher and then Witcher <sighs> and Indiana Jones. And then, then we get the palate cleanser of Mission Impossible. Oh, God. I'm looking forward to that. Cannot so wait. Not wait for that movie, dude. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, and apparently, bam, bam, apparently, bam. it's fucking good. Apparently, it's what really I'm good. hearing. I'm hearing it's real fucking good. Oh, the pain of having to rewatch Fallout before I go and see it. Oh, oh. no. I'll have to watch the whole series. <laughs> I'm going to watch all of them from number one. I'm actually, yeah. Go, go all on. the way back, huh? All the way back. Do it all. Going back to the OG. Because there wasn't a second one, was there? It just went from one to three. Correct? It was not Crin like that. It's not. It's bet. It's okay. Anthony Hopkins is in it. I know. <laughs> I know. Some Welsh bias going on there, but you know. -uh. No. Yeah. Not yeah. at all, mate. Yeah. I'll fuck you up. 
Bro. Gary, is there anything you'd like to, to plug before we go, sir? Yeah. I read the dumbest fucking Access Media article I have read this year. Oh, dear. You Last sure? night. Y- yes, I am sure. I am absolutely content. sure. And I'm doing a video on it because uh, I was actually going to do a different video. And I read this. And I'm like, nope, we got to do one on this one. Uh it is unfucking believable. Uh, then uh, going to review Secret Invasion, oh. and then hopefully watch Extraction one and two. I'll have time to like watch stuff, and then hopefully within the next few days watch the Grand Tour with with yes with friends uh, and play Gollum. Yes, uh, I can play Gollum. Uh, I have to do videos for the next two days, but like Saturday or Sunday I can play it. But you're all busy. Do yeah, do a Saturday. Mon- cause... Monday would be good next week. Oh, Monday, wait, are you I... busy Saturday as? Yes, I'm going to be Final Fantasy 16. I see. Well, can't we grand tour on Saturday? Just maybe, maybe at like night. an hour and a half, dude. Just at night. night. At night. Yeah, yeah. Well, for you, it's night. For me, at night. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's not night, but I don't care. Six I'm hours. Gonna... So Monday, Gollum. Yes, I can commit. We'll try. Tomorrow. We'll try. I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm Chad, okay? I'm trying. So we'll pencil in Gollum for Monday. You guys pick a time. Whatever's good for you. 9 p.m. All right. Okay. 9 p.m. Okay. UK time. Okay. What's uh, whatever that is? Our time? Uh, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. your time. Okay. Three it's only six p.m. hours different? Hmm? It's only six yeah, hours. You're, you're in Central, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I keep, six hours different central. Sorry, I'm on my old Pacific Coast, coast time. <laughs> you can oh, take here. you can take the man out of San Francisco, but you can never take oh, San Francisco dude. out of the I man. Not at San Francisco. That's I good. Never was. I was not born there. Okay, my kids were, but I wasn't. I was born in San Diego. Uh, for me, tomorrow, Tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to be doing a Final Fantasy 16 demo stream. Well, well. Awesome. You know, because the demo's out. So we're going to be doing the demo. And then Thursday, uh, I'm going to be doing uh, 6 p.m. UK time, Hot Toys, uh, on here. And, uh, you know, because it's the it's Thursday's the release of Final Fantasy 16. There's going to be some Final Fantasy 16 And then Friday, Friday night tights, our guests this week are. I have no idea. I know. No guy. idea. <laughs> Neither have I, because there hasn't been a room set up or anything. So I've got no clue. But it, they're going to be great. I know we got baggage claim coming up, Melanie Mack coming up. Uh, she better not be using those F slurs. That was pretty funny. <laughs> so was... many, so many pearl clutches. Well, it's kind of funny that it reveals what can be gotten away with now on Twitter, I guess. Because before that would have got her nuked for sure, right? Oh, she she eight to twelve hour ban. Oh, okay. I she thought for a there that they no. may have changed. Uh, she she got it. She 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 ate a twelve hour ban for it. But it, the the joke itself was funny. It made sense. So all the pearl clutchers can clutch their pearls. Yeah, you just you just give yourself away. You just you just give yourself. That's all. X-ray girl, you out there? Who's our guest? Oh, oh, oh it's Gundam. <laughs> That's right. It's Gundam. You being told by the audience. It's <laughs> yeah. I know we announced it last Friday, but um. I'm a little tired still. Okay. And it's, a, and it's a Gundam, so you just don't know. <laughs> Gun, Papa Gundam makes his triumphant return. I love Papa Gundam. Papa Gundam is lovely. He's lovely. Uh, and uh, and then pretty much any spare time I've got after that is going to be eaten up by uh, Final Fantasy 16's release. There you go. Right. Thank Wait. you for watching, everybody. Uh, like I said, I think at peak we're like 7.3k, which is phenomenal. So massive thank you to everyone who came to watch today. A uh, huge thank you to my mods, giving up your time. Really do appreciate it. Everybody who super chatted, 
uh, everybody who membered, gifted memberships, remembered. Thank you so much indeed for supporting the channel. And I will go through the remaining Super Chats this Sunday afternoon tea with us, 2.30 p.m. UK time. Until then, you take care. Bye for now. Bye. Adios.